Oh, here we go. Ah, uh, delays in technology. Aren't they fun? Thank you for joining us once again for another episode of Legends of the Drowned Isles, a homebrew 5th edition D&D home campaign, which we decided that the entire world needed to see. So we're broadcasting, streaming here on Twitch and also on YouTube later on. Hopefully you enjoy it. If you do, um, give a... Well, we'll tell you at the end what to do, but basically like surprise and sh uh, surprise. Like surprise and just <laughs> scream in the streets. And <laughs> Are you off. sure there's nothing in that car? I'm trying to yes and my own mistakes here. Use <laughs> <laughs> your own mistakes. Start again? <laughs> nah, nah, there is no starting again. Let's this is live. We'll do it live. <laughs> we'll do it live. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One. Uh, this game is uh, the background <laughs> and all the pits and pieces that are moving around, all the crazy NPCs. Those are my fault, but uh, I have several players here who produce their own faults. <laughs> I'd like to introduce them. We're not having them introduce themselves. It's falling apart right at the beginning here. I should have had that extra cup of coffee. Who am I kidding? Please go. Me, I'll, be, <laughs> I'll be the first fault. My name is Jody. I play Clark, the half-orc fighting rogue who has just uh, evaded a tsunami of something not nice, and we'll see what happens here shortly. I have also evaded the tsunami of also uh, not nice. So not nice. Uh, <laughs> I, I, yes, I'm aware. I was getting there. Thank you very much. <laughs> rails? We don't need no stinking rails. Let's go off the road. Uh, but my name is Marie, and I play Elzara, the uh, Wood Elf Druid, and I am at Kimmy Productions in the chat, and do have that open. So. Uh, uh, my name is Pat. I play Kuzima Ironbound, uh, who uh, just uh, fought his way past the Odeogs. <laughs> hey, I'm Nax, and I play Zacchaeus, half elf wizard, who did not get away from the shit tsunami, and the consequences of that will be known shortly. <laughs> Are you, are you trying to point to the appropriate player? Yeah, 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 I'm just no, jumping out here. I can technically do that, I yeah. guess, as well. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> All right. We're in a weird punchy mood today. Apparently. Yeah, it may be the luck of the Irish. Let's see how that particular, uh, how this particularly works out. Who knows? We shall see. A little bit of... <laughs> yeah, that was subtle. I tried. Okay. That I was tried super subtle. <laughs> oh, boy. This is going to be an odd one. Half of us are sleep deprived and the other half are happy, I guess. Um, so... <laughs> Serious face. This it was me role playing disease. Have serious face. Okay. Uh, as uh, OVVNS owns continues its travel through the realm of shadow, um, Pat, I think you said you you now have the explanation of owns uh, in front of you. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so it was Abduro. Ver uh, Ab I should pronounce correctly. It's Abduro Veritas Vite Niteo Sodalitas. So we've also been called Sadalitas before, right? And Sadalitas, and I watched him make a note here so I can remember that because I always forget. Yeah, it's just a gender-neutral form of fraternity, or I assume the other one's not cisternity because that <laughs> I think that's where you keep water right. as a cisternity. <laughs> Sisterhood. Sorority. There we go. Sorority. Sorority. Yeah. That's it. A people already. Mm. Uh, but yes, continuing their travels through the strange realm of shadow. They were in the grove, talking to Bernard Cotton, where they learned that Imral Emakir had indeed passed through here many years ago, determined to head into festering. Meanwhile, Elzera, floored by the discovery of her fiancé's ring at the core and the heart of the grove, found that her own ring now presented her with a sense of familiarity in two very different directions, one clearly centered on Bernard, and the other somewhere deep within festering. Concerned with Bernard's safety and eager to have the strange newcomers leave, the Dryads agreed with the group's decision to head into Festering. But to keep Bernard safe, they insisted that two of the Dryads would remain with him, but gave the group the option of choosing between the Dryads to take a guide. After talking it over, the group decided to have the stealthy yet meek Radix accompany them. After a rest, the group is led by Radix through the grove to the back wall, where a tunnel through the rock was obscured by thick roots. The tunnel was dark and long, descending deeper into the rock and dripped with water. Radix explained that the tunnel moved well below the, gray, the Greybrook and was one of the few ways to cross without using the bridge. Unfortunately, 
It appeared that something was waiting for people to use the tunnel as the roof overhead collapsed behind them uh, and a three-legged monster fell behind. Another one appeared before them. The battle was fierce, and the creatures using their tentacles to keep the group occupied, with the water flowing in from the pierced river above. When it was all over, the group fled the flooding tunnel, but not before noticing the vanishing form of a mine flayer in the distance. On the far shore of Greybrook, Radix remarked somewhat nervously, We'll need to find another way back. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus finds his arm itching slightly. And that's where we find ourselves, on the far shore of Grey Book. You can see behind you the vast river flowing quite quickly. In it you can see shapes, indistinct, clouded, much as the river itself is. The water seems muddy, but not muddy in the sense of what you would find at a typical simple brook. Instead it feels cloudy more than muddy. A gray, almost, uh, almost concrete-like. Uh, silt flowing through it and things moving within. Radix looks nervously around and says we must proceed carefully. Festering is dangerous. I was not hit. So Pass Without a Trace is still up and I didn't okay. cast any concentration spells. Okay. So, so Pass Without a Trace is still, is still in effect. Before you, while there's a little bit of clear land where it and damp land, where the the shore of Greybrook, where the river seems to move, and as you watch, almost move aggressively over its banks, as if it's trying to pierce within the larger wall of festering. Um, you have this brief opening in the in the edge, but before you stands festering, this thick, mired forest of gray, ancient trees. No leaves to be found, and the trees themselves seem twisted in shapes you haven't really thought of being trees. In fact, in some ways, it feels almost like it's broken wood, all stacked somehow vertically. And yet, as you watch, you can see the trees moving slightly. You feel no wind, but it's as though they are reacting to some, some pressure. Coiled around many of them are thick vines. They themselves, sort of a sickly green, um, with uh, small thorns that quickly grow into larger thorns, flexing almost like muscles. Radix takes a deep breath. Follow me, and nervously leads you into the bush. As she moves you through, she points out openings within and carefully instructs you to step over piece and over piece. Um, but she cautions you to be be quiet and cautions you to be slow. She demonstrates this by uh, flicking one of her thorns out at one of the trees. And as the thorn passes through the open air, all of the vines seem to flex and pierce at the thorn as it moves through. It is alive, but not in a way that I've ever liked. From what I understand, this used to be my home. And she kind of flexes a bit, and you can see her own spikes mirroring in some ways, her own thorns mirroring in some ways what those look like. It is a possibility. So it wasn't always like this, maybe? Or or was I not always like this? I don't think that festering was always like this. According to the murals in the Temple of Nemozini, they were not always like this. Can we help them? We can try. It would be in, every, in, in everybody's best interest. And if I look at my itchy arm, mm -hmm. what does it look like? Do I know what what's going on? As you're going to pull back your sleeve and noted a little bit of, of tearing on your sleeve where something had cut through, presumably either the, uh, the spikes and kind of scratched at the surface, um, you notice that there is coming from the scratches, or rather through the scratches, sort of a spreading of small black tendrils into the skin and it's starting to itch and hurt a little bit. Okay. So logic says that's not good, but do I know the extent of not good? <laughs> Roll a medicine check. Medicine. And I am trained in medicine because I, I read about it in a book, seriously. Theoretically you're trained in medicine. 20! Okay. 
Not twenty. So twenty-five. All right. You uh, you look at your arm. Are you doing so just openly, or are you actually trying mm-hmm. to conceal this at all? Well, I wouldn't know. It needs to be concealed anyway. So probably okay. just openly. Okay. Casually. As you pull back the sleeve and look at this, um, you can sort of almost feel it growing. This scratch is only minutes old, less than a minute, really. In some, in depending on how quickly you ran through the tunnel, but certainly no longer than an hour, and yet you can already see the progression of whatever this is growing through your veins. And as you watch and look at it, you carefully note that one of the tendrils grows a little longer and you can kind of feel a little bit of tingling sensation. If this continues as it is, the entire arm could be covered by this evening. You're not sure what this is. It's not just poison, it's something else. Probably disease of some kind. Whatever the Greybrook was carrying. I'd like everybody to make a stealth roll as you move through. Plus ten. Plus ten. Twenty-one. There was a blessing at one point. Is that twenty-two? Done? Uh, pass without trace and the. Uh, blessing. Oh, we had ma- we had bonus hit points, but we didn't have any bonus to okay. actions. Uh, right then. Wow. We got thirty-one. Thirty-one. Twenty-eight. Twenty-two. 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 Thirteen. Thirteen. Wow. With a one. Oh no. Uh, <laughs> uh, hmm. Okay. As you're moving through, and Radix in the lead, keeping quite low, and you're having some difficulty kind of maneuvering through these, not so much for uh, Kuzima being smaller, it actually, you can mirror Radix's own movements pretty well. Um, Zach is, although concerned with this, you're still kind of paying as much attention to the rather spiky jail you're walking through. Um, and duck under a lot of branches. And for you, um, uh, Clark. Clark, you find it at times you thought it was going to be difficult carrying that weapon on your back, mm-hmm. but it seems to move with you almost instinctually. Right. Uh, and uh, you, can, uh, you can't really see it much unless you look back, but everybody else will notice that the weapon kind of almost turns to shadow and curves around him. Almost as though he's, he, it's, it's wearing him almost in some ways, as much as he's wearing it. I'll choose not to notice that. <laughs> um, Ignores. <laughs> everything is fine. Radix turns back around and looks like she's about to say something when you hear a loud crack coming from about 20 feet away, followed by several other cracks. Uh, and Radix, her eyes go wide. She instantly stops moving, and you see her kind of move into the tree slightly. Um, you can see her wince as some of the thorns probably pushed into her. She rolled a one as well. Um, but she's almost invisible, even to your eyes at this moment. Um, you've been looking around and noting the, the, the nature, corrupted nature of what's around you. Um, there's a familiarity to this sort of thickness. And the term, the grove, has been kind of resonated in the back of your head for a while, where the grove to you almost always used to bring in memories of the Druid Grove, and how dense and wonderful and full of life, and full of welcoming life that that area was. There was nature, there were animals, there, were, there was a life there that, that thrived. Here it is though that that life has been squeezed out and actively wants to prevent life from moving in it, and you find yourself kind of pausing for a moment to to look at this as Radix turns around, and you turn a little bit and uh, catch yourself on one of those thorns, and involuntarily cry out a little bit as the smashing comes uh, up ahead of you, and you hear um, movement of large creatures up ahead. Um, who's got exceptional hearing? Any particular person has exceptional hearing? Nope. Okay. Other than my passive perception of yeah. 23. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but some people might have bonuses yeah. of hearing, I remember. Uh, you hear um, 
sort of grunting and complaining. What languages do you understand? Uh, I understand uh, common draconic, druidic, and elvish. Okay. It's not familiar to you, the language, It's but it does feel like a language, grunting and, and uh, sort of complaining in a, in a very uh, deep, uh, bassy voice, and then a as something hits something else, and then Do I hear this at all? Everybody hears that when it happens. Mm. Uh, it's only about 20 feet away now, and even then, you can't really make out any details. The, 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 the passageway is so thick. I'm going to tap Zacchaeus on the shoulder and go... I'll try to hear. I'm going to mouth <laughs> they're saying something. Okay. I'll try to hear I something. Know he, whatever's he understands going on. more than me. Um, make a perception check. So that's a seven. Okay. Um, you're still a little little struck by this tr- sudden noise that came out of nowhere that you weren't aware of. Uh, after that, there's only grunting and, and uh, complaining. Um, all of you hear this, though, as moving a little bit closer to you. You hear this crack, 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 crack as the, the ground or the the, the the vines and trees themselves are kind of being shoved out of the way. And then a loud <laughs> snuffling sound. Do I recognize it? Um, that's nothing you've heard before. Okay. I mean, other than the fact that something is sniffing and trying to pick out uh, something moving through here. And how far away does it seem now? Or? About 15 feet. And you're still having difficulty making out anything now. A slight amount of dark shadow. I'll cast Arcane Eye and okay. propel it to where I hear the noise. Okay. So this uh, let me just double check something. Uh, I mean, I'm assuming that one inch I can like maneuver between whatever it is. Okay. So you're moving it through the, um, yeah, through it wherever I can find like an opening between the foliage and the thorns. Okay. In the direction of the thrashing and sniffing. Okay. Uh, it moves through. Okay. And you focus your attention. I'm assuming on its, uh, uh, on its, on its. Do you have to see through it? Is that how that works? Hmm? Yeah, I can see through. Um, the but do you? Okay, it doesn't replace your normal vision. No. Okay, so you kind of have this weird double vision of of uh, the spell, and I'm assuming you're kind of concentrating on it as you send it through. The first thing that somewhat alarms you, uh, make a dex uh, saving throw. For the eye or for me? For you. Actually, sorry, wisdom saving throw. Technically. Wisdom. Yep. Do I get to re-roll? No. Fuck. Because that was all of a seven. Wait, seven? no, proficiency bonus. It's a saving throw, so whatever your saving throw is. Mm-hmm. Wisdom save. Hmm? Wisdom save. Yeah. Yeah. I have proficiency bonus to that, though, so a five plus But four, it's, the, so it's already calculated in your wisdom save bonus. On your sheet, there's a wisdom save mm-hmm. bonus section? Yeah, plus four. Yeah, that's the whole thing. <laughs> that's the total. So um, plus four. So five plus four, so nine. It's probably yeah. not enough, but uh, no, he's that's that's supposed to be plus four. Is he proficient in wisdom save? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So uh, it should be your proficiency plus bonus two plus your wisdom bonus. And proficiency bonus of four, so it should be plus six. Okay. Okay, so eleven. Eleven. Okay. You should write that down. Yeah, I should. And <laughs> you're moving the eye through, and you're used to it uh, being having to kind of move around different things, and you're kind of maneuvering it through. You're a little alarmed as the spikes from the vines beside it lance out at it as it's going through, uh, piercing the the eye, uh, and you flinch involuntarily, uh, realizing that even invisible and even as small as it is, these things are still reacting to it. That's terrifying. Um, Did they hit it? Yeah. They pierced where it was, but it doesn't have any physicality. <laughs> Uh, I thought, yeah, yeah, no, it's not destructive. It's a, it's that a little way. bit weird because uh, it, it technically can't move through solid things. It's not not physical, so I will say that it actually pierces it, and you spend a little bit of time kind of yanking it off, so it moves a little slower. Um, the The next thing you see as you kind of move it away from that uh, is the uh, sight of a very large tree trunk um, with spikes and wrapped all around it. The 
the uh, the uh, tree probably pulled out by whatever roots it has, the vines and everything, swinging through and clearing out a section in front of you. This would be only about 10 feet away from where you are. And before you, you see something which is uh, a deep green, uh, covered in, uh, sort of covered in vines themselves that seem like the, 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 uh, the uh, thorns are turned inward, almost pressed into its flesh. It stands nearly, let me just check on that, uh, nearly 10 feet tall. Uh, with very large arms uh, and a snarling, uh, snarling toothed maw, uh, and you can see this enormous nose sniffing. Make a uh, survival roll. You may have read of this. 19 plus. Did I read about survival? Yes, I did. So 24. Okay. Um, from what you remember listening or reading of some of the legends, this is a troll. Um, but behind it, and you kind of see as it sniffs, um, and then kind of looks into the to the uh, the uh, vines and trees, not seeming to notice the rest of you somehow, as you kind of move the arcane eye around, uh, and it is still attracting attention of the different uh, vines. So it's kind of watching as this is going on as the thing moves around. You see, uh, the, you hear actually, first of all, all of you hear this list rumbling uh, uh, voice. What languages do you speak? Uh, common, Elvish, Dwarvish, Gnomish, Halfling, Goblinoid, Infernal, Primordial. Okay. Actually, all of you can hear it, so the quick check on languages from you. Uh, Orc and Common. Okay. And from uh, Kuzaima? Uh, under Common and Deep Speech be the okay. only new stuff. Uh, you actually recognize the, the, the voice or understand the language. Uh, it's primitive, under Common. Um, very, very primitive, as in uh, most of the language structure itself is missing. Uh, but the the growling from behind uh, growls, uh, there's nothing there, we should move on. And as you kind of swing the eye around, you see taller than this one, almost 12 feet tall, stands another troll. But this one is malformed. This one has four arms, three on one side and one on the other, which is enormous, larger than the, the rest. Uh, the troll in front of the eye um, bats away at the arcane eye, which only Can't sees see the passing. It. No, but it sees the reaction of the of the things around it, uh, cracking and breaking many of the branches around. Which you see as you watch with the arcane eye, many of the broken branches fall off, and new shoots come out almost immediately. But not green live shoots, more like a a gray ooze that kind of flows into the right shape, um, and it sort of turns. Just so you know. Okay. Um, as it turns to the other one, and the other one just sort of grumbles and growls and proceeds to walk through, and they both of them seem to crash right through the thorns and without paying attention to it. Nope, they're turning away. Um, and the other one kind of looks back and throws the branch. Now, um, you see it. So, I will allow you to potentially warn others as you see a tree coming in your direction. You sort of casually toss it off in that direction. Incoming. Um, whispered. Okay. Very whispered. Okay. Uh, each of you can make a dexterity saving throw as the thing goes crashing through the trees. Do I get advantage because I saw it? Uh, you get to do it because you can see it. Well, there's a uh, five. <laughs> no, four. Twelve. Okay. Twelve. Fourteen. All right. Um, so each of you take ten points of piercing damage mm. as the as the uh, thorn encrusted uh, tree trunk goes smashing through, shoving the thorns in your direction. Uh, you see Radix also flinch. Can I use uh, an uncanny dodge to take half damage? You certainly can. Damage? So it's five. That'd be five. I don't know if you can, because uncanny dodge says you have to be able to see it coming. Uh, he was warned of its coming. Okay. So I will count that. The ice stays up, though. Mm. Uh, actually, Radix is not that bad off. Uh, she saw it coming and managed to dodge, but still, even then, where she is, she gets pinioned a couple of times. And you see her resist the urge to cry out. All of you that were hit make a wisdom saving throw. Four. Nope. Wisdom. No. Uh. 
Uh, of uh, 14. 14? 16. 16. The two of you kind of take the pain and kind of bite your tongue. Two of you, however, uh, as the as the uh, little thorns uh, burrow into your hide, can't help Jeez. but make a noise. There's a, a sound of pausing up ahead as the, the crashing through the trees stops for a second. Pass without a trace is still up. Yeah, it is. And you rolled your stealth already. No, um, no, but I, I rolled my con save from taking mm-hmm. damage. I mean, oh, okay. Yeah, Sorry. Here for the yeah. Um, there's a brief moment and you hear an argument start up. I was still watching them because the eye stayed yep. up. And you see the eye and you see the, the, the smaller one turn back to the noise. The larger one still seems to be uh, annoyed. I'll whisper very, very quiet. Or I, I know as long as I can read lips, so I will mouth the, the words, there are trolls ahead, two of them. Okay. What are they saying? Um, the small one is saying, sound something, something there. The larger one is saying, no, nothing, must go. And you see the larger one turn and all of you can hear it crashing through once again, heading off, essentially heading off what would be the sort of south or southwesterly direction essentially from where you are, where you're heading more of a, uh, a northwesterly direction. The other one's standing there and kind of looking Still in this direction. I'll just go like this to all my companions. Mm-hmm. Okay. Moment passes. It kind of wanders up again. You see it sniffing once again. And it grunts and turns around and walks away, following the other one. Making its own path as the path the larger one had made is already gone. <laughs> I sigh, but not audibly. You know? <laughs> uh, Radix kind of moves forward, and you can see she's bleeding a little bit, but she seems more shaken by the experience than anything else. Radix, house close. Are trolls often found in these forests? There are many things found in here. I've not gone too far deep, but I typically try to avoid anything that large. Same. I'm glad we managed to avoid them. Uh, Do you know what they were saying? It was all grunting to me. Do you know? I don't. Whatever language that is, uh, it, was it similar to whatever that gibbering mouther was speaking in the caves all those days ago? No, it's uh, it's the common tongue used under the crust of the world. Did you understand it? Yes. Well, what did it say? They're idiots. Well, yes, I've realized that, but. Did you understand what they were saying? Yes. They said, sound, that way. No, go this way. That was about it. Well, I'm glad they did not come this way, then. Um, let's avoid... My bad, I just got hit by a tree. Uh, <laughs> and you can kind of see that the, the log that was pulled down, you can already see that some of the roots in the bottom are actually growing into the ground where it is. Um, which is kind of shocking to you because trees don't normally grow that rapidly. Um, but who knows what's possible here. This is a weird forest. I don't like it. Nor do I. But uh, the eye is still... I don't say this out loud. Uh, that, okay. that, 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 is, that is my reaction <laughs> yeah. to the messed up trees. <laughs> All right. So you're keeping the arcane eye up? Yeah. Okay. They can detect the magical eye. It's supposed to be invisible. Clearly these trees... Their creatures, whatever. And I'm guessing are. that this is whispered. <laughs> detect magic. Yeah, <laughs> it is whispered. It's just, it's just for the sake of the microphone, I feel like mm-hmm. I, I shouldn't be like. <laughs> <laughs> Stage Some whispering. Things don't yeah. require sight, or don't rely on sight. Yes. Did they see it? This invisible the tree. Of yours? Yes. The thorns were lashing out at it. It was. They weird can sense things. To control. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is why we need to proceed with care. Yes, and uh. Just Completely unrelated topic. What happens to creatures or living beings when they touch the Greybrook? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> bad things. But how bad? And how quickly? The strange creatures often claim those who fall in the river. From what I understand, they do not return, as others do. Some have been seen later on, changed. Changed in what way? And is there any way to undo this change? 
I do not know. Yeah, well then, that... Okay. But we did not fall in the river. I, I may have. Oh, yes. Several of us touched the river. But you did not fall in it. We were underneath the river. She seems confused by what you mean by this. Because you, instead of swimming through the river, you kind of went under it. But he was when the creatures attacked, he was covered attacked in water. Us. I was in the water. Something scratched my arm, and now there's this. And uh, she looks Ooh. very concerned. Actually, as you as you pull back that, you can now see that it's spread out, and now from the central part of your arm, it's spread out almost all the way to your wrist and oh back to your elbow. At this it's point. getting worse. Um, and yeah. uh, it's dark, um, and as you kind of watch it. Uh, the center part almost seems like the skin is flaking a bit and almost becoming more more liquidy. Do you know if there's any way to stop this? And she looks aghast at that. It's only itchy. It looks worse than it feels, but I... We can remove the arm. <laughs> Preferably... And she kind of looks over <laughs> at, <laughs> at, uh, <laughs> at Clark. That's exactly what I was Clark, right. Clark's been, like, grinning this whole time, and he just kind of nods. Well, no. Time uh, to amputate. Yeah. Chop, chop. <laughs> heal. I do not know what to do. It might be why I heal three points hmm? on him. Okay. You regain three hit points. Woo! Uh, I believe that just took your temporary hit points. Hmm? Yeah, you don't hmm. regain temporary hit points from healing. but We don't have any temporary hit points. Okay. Mm-hmm. We have a higher hit point maximum. Okay. The eight spell just raises your maximum hit anyway, points. Anyway, at the rate it's spreading, no, but this wasn't my the eight spell by this evening. Whatever the evening is, in this I had it marked mm-hmm. specifically as temporary. But if we can find anything, points, I don't know. I've got in mine down as plus ten maximum hit points. I'd rather really hold on to the arm for now. So you, you say anybody who has been touched by the river never returns, or returns as something terrible? I've only seen a few people fall in, and others have told me they've seen them again by the bridge, mostly. Okay, so anecdotal evidence, that does not apply. I'll take my chances. I know only what I hear. Did the healing word do anything for his arm? It did not seem to affect it. Okay. Mm. Disease, poison, parasite. Mm-hmm. I cannot heal those. Maybe at the Temple of Himosini, the speaker would know something that can be done. As long as we don't kill the priest again. Oh, what do you mean again? That too so far. Uh-huh. Yes. We have a one hundred percent success rate in leading to the deaths of priests of Nawazni. <laughs> that is a very Not small sample size. True. Oh, this is a we have a sixty-six. <laughs> <laughs> well, third yeah. temple they've been yeah. to. Anyway, I'll keep monitoring it. Okay. If anything creepy and crawly happens, I'll let the party know. How long has it been since? Like, is that a scale of a few minutes, or we'll be walking for a while before... Uh, at this point, you've been walking for about 15 minutes yeah. in two, but yeah. it's very, very slow moving. If it, if that is the result after 15 minutes, you may not be alive in an hour. And what do you suggest? I don't know. Ignoring it's probably bad, though. I don't think a protection from poison would help in this case. It might. If it's, it's a poison... A do I know it's a, a disease. Do I know if it's a poison or a yeah, disease? Yeah, but well, we don't know if it's a poison. You've never seen anything like this before. Um, we just know it's something. Poisons that's not don't typically grow like that, yeah. and poisons would flow through your bloodstream probably or your muscles and yeah. cause some immediate effects. You don't feel anything wrong. The area is a little bit sensitive to the touch, but other than that, it doesn't well, really feel like a poison. Yeah. Um, and it's not just a. a you rolled a twenty-five medicine check. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Probably not a poison. Uh, at least not a poison you're familiar with. Yeah. It doesn't mm. feel like a poison. So I can do nothing. Um, I don't have either. that spell. The prepared. fact that it's grown this much since you last looked at it, though, is a little bit disturbing to you. Mm-hmm. How you choose to express that's your own course. Right. Uh, and you have the Just making like this, like, oh shit, look at my face, basically. Useful. Mm, Clark says, so. hold out your arm. And he draws Lucille. Uh, how about... No, that seems more painful than whatever small itch I'm feeling now. You can so eventually get it if back. If I scratch it, is there anything like on my other hand? No, no. It seems like it's uh, there's still a layer of of skin. It seems over top. It's just more translucent, and uh, the sort of purplish color underneath is 
is undisturbed by that. Uh, although it has a texture that's a little bit weird than the last time you scratched at it. No, it's almost liquid underneath the uh, skin. We have so a love potion, but that, that would like do like nothing a, for him. Okay. <laughs> Let's try not uh, to get too much crosstalk so we don't, okay. don't get confused here. Um, Sorry, we were looking uh, if we had I can just hold out my arm for you to chop it off. That just, just no. There are ways for you to grow your back. You should, you should trust me more. We cannot stay here long. They may be back. Clark holds out Lucille. What? You could try T- tying touch it. the wound to this. I'll. You won't like shove it into my arm as soon as I touch. Really, this is a test of trust, my friend. I'll just like. Inch ever so slowly. Okay. I'm gonna see if the silver reacts to the to the condition. Okay. Because it's a silvered weapon. Um, are you just resting it on top? Yeah, he's not. He's not cutting. Okay. Um, the the blade touches the surface of your skin, and you can see the surface where it had become a little bit flakier, uh, kind of flake even faster, um, and then there's a little bit of a, of an oozing black on the surface of the blade. Um, Make a Constitution saving throw. Not twenty. Not twenty. <laughs> uh, you make you make yourself not flinch as you feel it move back away from the surface of your skin. The darkness on the surface now seems to dissipate somewhat slightly, but you can feel it now, kind of in, encircling the bone. It did seem to react. Okay, pulls the blade away and <laughs> shake, shake, shake. Uh, you kind of do that, and you, you kind of swing the blade out, and then ting 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 as all these little, uh, these little expected. thorns yeah, it's uh, smash onto it. Uh, you see Radix flinch from the noise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, clean, <laughs> clean the blade with a rag. And... Okay. Do I know of any magical ways to grow my arm back? <laughs> there Christ. are legends of people who have uh, who have done so. Um, even in this place, there supposedly is a rebirth of sorts. Give me two seconds. <laughs> we cannot stay here. Do I need to seems to be increasingly more nervous. What does this mean? Uh, so, it was reacting to the silver and just like getting pushed back into the bone? It seemed to retreat from the silver blade. Okay. Could you possibly like bring the blade from here to here so it could retreat out of my hand? I'm not a doctor. Just hold out the blade. I think we need to get moving. Yes, we do. We do. But but if we have to, I think I can amputate your arm safely. Yes, it, very painful. Even. Do you wish to tie off the arm to prevent the spread? It wouldn't work. I don't think. I've I've heard of spells that would be able to get your arm back. Oh. You know that that druids have done. Such that, that's why I was checking. Um, um, if, if it was in my spell list, then I would know of it. Yeah. You certainly would have heard of such a thing. Yeah. Um, it's a 7th level spell, so I don't have that yet. Yeah. But it is a thing that I will be able to do. Um, well then. There's a moment where do you're contemplating this and, and you know the talk of amputation. And then you remember the person who, in some senses, is your mentor. Yeah. <laughs> returning from this land with only one arm. That's where, I, where my brain is at. Well, I'd rather lose it of my own accord than lose it in worse ways. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then let's go. And do I know like how long it would take for it to reach like here? And so like where it is now? Would it be amputated at the elbow or like? It would have to be the elbow. You saw it actually reach all the way to the elbow from the wrist all the way to the elbow at this point. Okay, but the elbow can stay, right? Uh, it seems to, but then again, it's retreated. You can't really make them as much mark of the progress anymore. Uh, from the surface, it looks only slightly uh, darker, okay. like a deep bruise that is healed partway, but you can feel inside the muscle starting to to shift uh, to accommodate whatever this thing is. All right, well, try to save the elbow if you can. I would say don't take any risks. <laughs> and where it was all the way to the elbow, I would say cut off the whole arm. It's not it, the spell. The regenerate spell is going to grow back your entire arm. It's not. It's not like you'll you'd be able to do anything with a nub. But it's like if it could still flex, I was going to like tie off the wand here so it could be like. You don't have a hand. <laughs> yeah, it's not how the game mechanics work. Game mechanics, Mega Man can. Did it. So, 
uh, Kujima, who doesn't know what you're reeling, mm -hmm. it, did it retreat inside? Yes. Is it moving around? It's deeper. It is moving farther. It's not a disease. It's a parasite. Diseases don't move around inside you like that. No, they just spread across you until they consume you. Hmm. <sighs> if it is moving around and acting on its own and avoiding silver, then you have not caught something. You have been implanted with something. We must move now. And there's a desperate plea from Radix as she's starting to move and hoping you'll follow. Yep. Um, I follow. It's Zachus's choice if he if he lets Clark mm -hmm. chop oh, his arm off. Clark's or not. happy to follow the plant lady. That's fine. Just, Just do it. No. What? You had your chance. <laughs> <laughs> you had your chance. <laughs> we need to go. We need to go. Fine. Um, you also. And especially Clark kind of having seen the situation, even just when you move the blade back, how much everything reacted to it. Um, this, whatever it is you're around, is dangerous. Yeah. And part of what's going in your mind, I suspect at this point, is just sort of doing the numbers in terms of it attacked just because it knew we were here. Mm -hmm. What would it do if there was an open wound? Mm -hmm. This may not be safe. Or it might work. She leads you deeper in. Another stealth roll, please. You do still have pass with it, please. That's one. Oh. <laughs> That's better than a one. Ten. Actually, a dirty 20. <laughs> also a dirty 20. <laughs> I rolled really, really crappy and got a 26. Wow. 36. 36. Woo. Uh, I'm very proud of my NPC rolled a 20. So she actually has to keep doubling back to let you know where she is with her 41 stealth. <laughs> um, she very easily... She's uh, the only person that so far that has been able to hide from me. <laughs> yeah, you find it surprising. And at times you're, you're not entirely certain. Oh, yeah. In the cave. <laughs> not yeah. entirely certain uh, where she's at. Um, but once again, somewhat similar to your approach to the grove, every once in a while she turns around and opens up an eye very close to you. So you can actually make out her form uh, fitting in and moving. Now she's moving in a very weird manner as well. Not so much walking as using all four limbs to kind of move and crawl and move around these things. Occasionally doubling, doubling back to try to provide an alternative space for Clark who is larger and uh, Zacchaeus who is very tall to move through. And we're going in the right way. Um, it does feel like you're diverging a little bit. It feels like the essence you're feeling is closer to more north from where you are, north-northwest, and you're diverging a little bit further west. I'll point this out. I'm assuming he'd notice as well. Yeah. Keep mind. Um, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. but you don't know which direction she wants to go in. Okay. You know, you know which direction you're moving in relative to the center mm -hmm. of the, the local north. Um, but the path is winding and twisting as she moves around massive tree trunks. And you start to, to see tree trunks which are of a size familiar to of the grove. These are 100 feet wide at points, and she very, very carefully avoids those entirely, but you can see them and make them out throughout the area. Yeah. Um, and you move outward, another hour of movement, and now definitely moving more Excuse westward me, than north-northwest. Um, as you, you, uh, uh, you feel, make another, make a constitution saving throw. <laughs> She's fucking killing it today, 20. Nice, wow. 25. No, uh, as you kind of feel the itch 22. subside, Okay. It doesn't feel itchy any longer, but as you look, you can now see that there's a, a small tendril leading around the, the just above the elbow now, just below the, the main muscle, and the entire arm below is tingly. I will recast Pass, pass Without a Trace. Okay. That's all my level two slots. I'm keeping an eye on Stumpy. Okay. Stumpy. Proto Stumpy. Especially when he checks his arm. Also, Clark's back to going itchy. slow, I believe. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's growing fast. Yeah, it's. I can feel it here. Mm. I can see that. But less so than before. If there maybe, maybe I could fight off the infection on, on its own. If there's an opportunity uh, mm -hmm. to see, when he points at his arm, does the does the coloring change? Zach is not hiding anything. <laughs> um, 
make a make a perception check. Sure. Just to see if you notice the distance. Probably not with a uh, thirteen. I'm like not hiding it at all, though. The, you you can see as he kind of checks the arm that there's definitely some discoloration behind the elbow now, right? Uh, above the elbow, basically in the back of the the upper arm. Mm-hmm. Um, without looking closer, it'd be hard to tell the exact okay. the distance. But it doesn't obviously like squirm away, right? It's not moving. Okay. We're not not moving fast enough that you can see. Okay. Um, as you move forward, um, you hear a small surprised noise come from Radix, who has been at this point almost completely silent and completely invisible. And as you move forward, you notice weirdly the the green around you, like the green of the vines, seems to grow a little more vivid. And the gray of the trees kind of sort of turns more brown. And then you step out into a clearing. The clearing's ground is covered with uh, small, low, um, green petaled ground cover. What does this say? Um, this says that while you're moving in the west, it's definitely diverging more that way. You're moving away from, or not closer to the center at this point. Uh, it's almost closer to north at this particular point that you've moved. Um, and as you come out into this clearing, um, you see a an open space. The, the clearing seems to go on for 200 feet at least. In the center of the clearing is a low stone, about um, five feet tall. It's low in comparison to the overgrowth that's around it. I don't go into the clearing. Okay. Um, but you can see it on the edge nonetheless. Yeah. Um, and the, the growth itself, the, the ground cover, seems to be about four or five inches tall. Vibrant, green, and colorful. Uh, and seated on top of the stone. Um, looks to be a gnome, seated comfortably, legs crossed, mm-hmm. wearing a vivid green outfit, uh, and wearing a vivid green co- uh, cowl. Um, and you hear the sounds of a uh, a whistle, or or a um, uh, a flute, essentially, being blown. Just kind of picking out different notes, different uh, elements, trying to come up with something, and then a few seconds later, breaks into a tune. And in this open area, where even the light seems a little brighter, um, it is almost as though a spring breeze has moved across the area. Um, and Radix looks really confused. Do we recognize the gnome? Um, from this distance, about 100 feet away, it's just a gnome-shaped person. Doesn't seem to have paid attention to you, hasn't really looked up. Do the colors look familiar at all? Um, you've seen green before. <laughs> but it's not a particular style you're familiar with. It's probably the first green you've seen here. Yeah. It's st- starkly different, vivid, living green. And that's the, one of the things that you notice immediately, is in this area of, of sort of dead trees, there is this space which is alive. It's where all the chlorophyll went. What's in? It's where all the chlorophyll went. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Should we go to him? Clark starts walking into the clearing. I'm staying... Okay. You feel a warm breeze on your skin as you move in. Uh, and thought. you can smell stay, what stay smells here. like fresh flowers. Let's see if they're real. I'll walk with Clark. Okay. Let me know when we get within about 60 feet. Alright. So uh, I asked a question, and only because I haven't answered, one person goes, two people go, the other one stays, and I'm like... Radix has not moved from the edge. She's still kind of hiding within the thorns or something. I'm with, with Radix on this. Alright, okay. so I guess we're staying here for now. The plant people are saying, fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you think it's Cicero? I'm not answering any of your questions. I'm like... <laughs> As you uh, move into uh, the the space and feel that warm breeze, the, the tune seems to pick up. Seems to find the place of the tune. I'm and keeping it seems... very good. Hmm? I'm keeping eye contact. Okay. With... Uh, and it seems to be uh, to be lightning. Um, both of you make a charisma saving throw. I Glad. am. Uh, not to mention this, but I am going to be counter charming. So you're going to run a little. Okay. Yep. Uh, or just counter charm does what exactly? Uh, da, 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 where is that? Uh, allies within thirty feet who can hear me get advantage versus fear and charm. Okay, that's basically Clark at this point. Uh, and yourself, obviously. So you do get advantage on the roll. 19 total. With 19. advantage. Yeah. Uh, 
That's a great 15. 15. So with the small amount of drumming that uh, Kuzumaya, Kuzaima, I got myself corrected, Kuzaima uh, makes on uh, his, his small uh, uh, pad, it's uh, as though it kind of runs a different beat to the, the flute being played. And while you can kind of feel the sense of warmth flowing over you, it gets disrupted every time the, the drum beat sounds. Um, and you uh, hear the music stop. Uh, and there's a sort of lilting laugh from the figure on the stone. Well, I didn't expect that. The voice does not sound familiar to you two, but neither of you have met a number of people before. It's true. A large number. <laughs> a large number of people you haven't met before. Uh, you, you've met Sothero, so... It's true. It doesn't sound familiar in any case. Yeah. Um, you come within... How close did you want to come? Uh, well, once we're close enough that my uh, dolls can see 60 feet, Okay. Uh, I call one up to my shoulder. Okay, are they going along the, the ground? They, they always cling to my bag when okay. I'm walking around. Yep. Um, as the both of you walk in, uh, and you can, doesn't seem to be anything holding you back. You can walk as far as you like, it seems, so far. Mm hmm. No, just uh, when we're about 20 paces away, well, 20 human paces away, because a couple of paces feet? are way smaller. <laughs> or 20, or you mean S no, 60 feet? 60 feet, okay. 20 paces. Although a pace might be six, actually. Anyways, let's do it in feet. I'm not yeah. confused. <laughs> Standard um, measurement here. <laughs> I'll just ask the doll. Like, uh, uh, I'm I'm going to ask you a question. Raise your right arm if it uh, if the answer is yes. Your left arm if the answer is no. Do you sense a living being sixty feet ahead of us? And the doll kind of uh, nods its little head and then turns, swings over. And you, it's weird because the expression doesn't really change on the doll's face, but its head kind of leans in as if concentrating. And then, what was the response? Right, right hand? Uh, is... Yes, no. Okay. Um, you see it go as if it can't really, doesn't really know right from left very well. Um, but then it raises its right hand. So they're, they're it. Uh, hmm. Not if the answer is yes, don't do anything if the answer is no. So there is a being up ahead of us, as I asked. Uh, and it, it nods okay. its head. The little, the little uh, uh, I'm assuming it's a cloth doll, kind of folds it. No, no, these, this one would be a candle. Oh, it's a oh, The cloth candle. dolls are all gone. Okay. They died. So it doesn't really have a head? <laughs> well, it so looks the, like the little, uh, fla the little like flame kind of tilts a little bit. It looks like that. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, it, it indicates that yes, there's, there seems to be a yes to your question. Hmm. It is not an illusion, but it was trying to charm us. The tune changes this time to something different. Um, I keep the counter charm going. Cause okay. It's not a once per X thing. Um, you don't sense any th any sort of impending threat at this particular point. Um, what do you do? Uh, Clark puts a hand on the on the glaive and, okay. and brings it down to the side and proceeds forward in a non-threatening fashion. Okay. There is a, a trill on the music when you extend the glaive, almost kind of a, a little doo -doo 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 -doo, kind of a, a surprised and, and welcoming, uh, <laughs> not quite, uh, as, uh, as the, the tune kind of shifts a little bit and then he stops. I have not seen a reaper in a long time. You're pretty rare. Clark smiles to himself. Tell me, what business have you have in this area? Why don't you bring your friends forward? There's no harm here. This, if anything, is the safest place in this somewhat destroyed forest. Can I see that he knows we're here from this distance? Uh, you can hear his voice quite clearly. Okay. Um, he doesn't seem to be looking in any particular direction, but he saw where the two of them came out of the, out of the, uh, the uh, thicket. I think, Tell perhaps, Elzera. I think perhaps they don't want to be charmed. Oh, well, it was only something to help. But if they don't want it, I won't give it. I'll tell Alzara and Ray I don't stop well, anyway. <laughs> it looks like they know we're here. I'm just gonna... I think Alzara at this point is still being very cautious okay. about this, so her and Radix will stay back for the moment. Yeah, I'll, I'll go forward. Also, <laughs> Marie had to go yeah. for a moment, so hopefully she comes back in a I'll, I'll just look up to Clark and say... Hmm? I don't like him already, but sure. Um, I mean, it's... You're in charge. <laughs> he, takes, he takes I'm the, uh, the flute, you. 
and in his the in his sort of sort of uh, uh, green uh, jacket that he's wearing, he takes the flute, which is about half the length of him, and just sort of pushes it gently into an inside pocket that it would never fit in. Right, pocket of holding. Greetings. So, what brings you to this terrible, terrible place? Oh, you're carrying a passenger. Yeah. You should do something about that. Yes. Uh, what what should be done about that? Well, most people would just say take the arm off. <sighs> That's what I was afraid of. Persons. But I might be able to do something better for that. Yeah, if what you cost? are willing to do something for me. At what cost? Which is what I was going to ask. Yes. Well, if you're willing, there was something taken of mine, and I'd rather have it back. If what you was can it? get it back for me, then uh, I can help you. Oh, it was a, a trifle, really, but it means something to me. A, a ring, silver in nature, small little green gem on it. Beautiful little thing. Mm -hmm. Do I recognize that ring at all from the description? I mean, you've seen beautiful rings with green stones. There's nothing particularly special mm -hmm. about this. And where is this ring? And do I have enough time to retrieve the ring, bring it back here without dying? Well, I assume you're not slow. If you're slow, then nothing's going to help you. Don't but if slow. you're quick enough... I'm sure you'll be fine. Uh, the ring was taken by a couple of brutes. Trolls? Yes, I think that's what they're called. I assume that uh, that uh, you and uh, Radix stayed back on the edge and did not uh, accept the invitation to come in. Zakis is there now. <laughs> Zakis has joined the others as well. I figured. You can see hear clearly what he said, which isn't much so far. He's welcomed you in. Um, there was a, a Kuzaima saying that the others did not want to be charmed. And he simply said, well, I was only trying to help. Um, the voice does not seem familiar, um, but it seems warm and friendly. It's uh, As you get close, you notice it's a, 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 a small gnome. Um, he's got a very small tuft of the remains of a red beard uh, on his chin. Um, the, uh, the cowl that he's wearing looks of very fine quality, as does the jacket that he's wearing. I'll not to him because my jacket, my, my robe is of equally fun quality. Most of it. Yeah. <laughs> it repairs um, itself. It, it has repaired the the uh, the spot which was torn, yeah. which uh, by the creature. But yeah. So uh, what is this passenger exactly? Oh well, that's a terrible thing. I, I, well, I, I figured that much. It already. probably has a name, but I'm not exactly sure. Mm -hmm. The Illithid have um, have their ways of spreading themselves. And I think the Grey Brook has now been infested by them. Terrible, terrible thing. Have I read about these things before? Illithids and how they spread themselves? Um, you know, just in case... You like, haven't known read, anything like, about Illithids before. before, so I'm going to say no. Okay. What do I know about them since they're my chosen <laughs> You can thing. make a history check. Yes. <laughs> uh, let's see. Can I help him by bouncing off theories back and forth? Or? <laughs> Where's the thing? I'm just going to keep an eye on this guy's body language. Okay. <clears throat> he seems very open and unthreatened. Okay. Right. I'm keeping an eye on everything. You can look in, in hey. front of you, and the the uh, waves of uh, low ground cover seem to be moving as if from a spring or summer breeze. Um, they look vibrant, alive, and um, very reminiscent of uh, of the the hills around, say, Pabwich Glens, and the exterior hills that are there. But I know we're supposed to be going that way. <laughs> you know that you're not necessarily going directly towards the center, but Radix also told you that it was too dangerous to go directly there, plus the dragons are in the way. Fair. Um, so, I forgot that. Yeah. The player forgot that. So. Um, but you had indicated kind of the direction you wanted to go. and She okay. seems to be... The, the pathway is very winding as she takes you around some of these bigger trees and, and so forth. Nineteen. Nineteen. Um... You've actually witnessed this process, and you kind of dig back into the dim memories of when you were controlled. And some of the memories are hard to hard to access. It's it's not because they're they're difficult. It's more that the memories themselves are of dark times when you were in their service, uh, and mm. how they would take a certain number of the people that they mind controlled, and they would uh, essentially a uh, a small piece of them would break off and push its way into them, slowly reaching to the brain. When it reached the brain, uh, the body began to transform and they would become another one of the illithid. Mm. About how long is the process normally? Um, normally the, like the, the, the uh, victims would have, well, the victims that were in captivity would be kept in captivity for a couple of weeks. 
Um, so it didn't it didn't seem to be as quick as what's happening here. Mm. The other the other um, thing is you do know that they did do this to certain towns. They would do kind of an experiment and implant someone there, and that would take a couple of weeks. But they didn't seem to notice it either. Mm. You would have been sent into town to essentially shepherd and make sure and check in from time to time on them, not knowing exactly why. Although now in retrospect, you understand why. Um, because no one suspected your presence where they would definitely cause some, some attra attraction or attract attention. The illicit are turning you into one of them. Uh, well, that's not... This is a oh, the little one's right. That's, that's basically the process. It's a little bit different than that, I think, but, um, but basically that's right. Faster here. How long does it take? Well, Which means it will be faster here. Oh, normally God. it took I wouldn't sleep weeks. on it if I were you. It is much, much faster here. In, in, in our lands, those who were changing often did not know for a long time. Once it reaches your brain, it will start to change your body. Well, that's... It is already... Not good. 30% of the way there. No, it is here. Mm-hmm. Bang. Bing, bing. So actually, you, kind of, you kind, of, kind of pull up your your uh, your arm to look at it a little bit. Make a perception check. Can I move on as well? Is it not from your distance? Because mm -hmm. they're they're kind of in the middle of the clearing. Would this be uh, under my gain advantage to track uh, sur like survival yeah. rolls? Well, I'll, I'll, yeah, sure. Okay. It works. Oh, good. Uh, that would be uh, twenty four. So what what Zacchus has been unable to notice? is the fact that on the back of the arm, where he can't really see, it started to grow even faster. And it's now midway up that upper arm. One tendril that you can see. Mm. And just below the surface. Is it, it is back here. No, it's not. Minor conjuration <laughs> mirror. Can you hold that there? Well, I think... How long does Arcane Eye last, actually? Oh, it's, it's gone. Yeah, it's it's gone. gone. Okay. Okay. So yeah, the minor conjuration easily can okay. conjure a little hand mirror. And you kind of look and it's like... Oh, well then. Uh, it is halfway there. So according to how much time we've been walking, how long does it have to reach my brain? I mean, at this rate, it's hours. Cool, okay. So, uh, Gnome of, uh, what's your name? Oh, you can call me Corin, if you like. So, Corin, uh, you said you can do something about this. What is it? Oh, I have a few tricks up my sleeve. We've seen a few trolls earlier. We can uh, hopefully retrieve the ring. Oh, well, that's probably them. There's more than two running around, but if you've seen them close to here, that's probably them. Uh, should Who we... are you, by the way? I don't think we've been properly introduced. My name is Corin. You know that much. I'm Zagus and Lana Porter of Vatur. Ah, Vatur. Nice yes. little place. You've been there? Oh, more than once. Excellent. How, Hope how, to be again soon. How did you come here? Well, that's a long story. Far longer than you've got left alive. Yeah. Can and I read his lips or make a perception check to see if I can read his lips? Yeah, you can actually read his lips from here, no problem. So you're following Does the conversation. Does the name Corrin ring a bell because it's ringing a bell for the player? <laughs> um, you have heard uh, another Corrin before. Mm -hmm. uh, that was Corrin, uh, that was uh, Alistair's brother was named Corrin. Okay, that's why the name but <laughs> rang, rang a bell. His brother was human, Yeah. and this is probably not him, but... Okay. <laughs> It, it was um, more player, well, not remember. Did people get reincarnated? They do. Different things they here. do. Well, maybe Corrin is like a common name in Vitor as John. Isn't is Corrin in... dead? <laughs> hmm? Went missing. No, he went missing. He went missing. And then was cloned by changelings or something. Right. Well, presumably. Uh, yeah. Who knows where he is now? Yeah. Cool. And you, Reaper. I'm assuming that's not your only name. Or has that taken hold yet? I'm Clark. Clark? That's a fine name. Suits you, too. Clark blinks. <laughs> <laughs> and little one, what's your name? You may call me Ironbound. Ironbound? Oh, that sounds very serious. I hope it's not catching. I shake a leg. With the, the uh, iron uh, oh. thing on it. We can probably get that written for you if you want. Nah, it's good. It's part of your name now, I suppose. And your friends on the edge. Who are they? Friends on the edge. Uh, I, they are... They're welcome to come in. I'll cause them no harm. I don't move. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll message back and say they have magic to charm, but I am countering it. No, well, they stopped the magic so far. 
I don't trust this fake field. No, they are there. Just a moment. Uh, I asked my uh, animated candle, mm -hmm. uh, are we standing in a, a field of grasses or whatever I see around me? Um, it sees what you see, unless there's something special about well, it. It has blind sight, so if this is all an illusion, Can't it'll see, see whatever's it's, oh, actually there. I suppose, yeah. Um, uh, it kind of shrugs because it doesn't know what you see. Um, That's what I was saying. If it was, I, I describe what I see around um, there. Um, um, it sort of nods its head, yeah. That's okay. what it seems to see. I'll message back. I don't think this is an illusion, but I don't trust this person. However, they may be able to cure Zakis, who only has a couple of hours at best. They want us to find those two trolls and get a ring back. Other than that, I leave it up to you guys. I'm not going going in. So I've what saved... does bring you into Festering? Not to prolong the incident, because I'm sure you would care to have, I don't know, a cure or some kind? Yes, a cure. You are correct. If we are to keep him from becoming something that I must kill, whoa, whoa, what? then we must go now. I will not allow Nalithid to live. Well, what if it's me? It will you not. just kill me in cold blood for it no will, reason? It will not be you. I'm I'm afraid afraid it, it will be your right body, there. but it will not be you. Would I lose my mind? Yes. Technically, it wouldn't be lost. No. So much as transformed into something else. What is this something else? You would be an evil entity craving only knowledge and power. Yeah. Well, but also different. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that's craving what, knowledge. That's what Kuzama was getting to. <laughs> <laughs> From what um, I understand, you'd also be connected to the great consciousness. And at that point, I don't know how much individual will you really have. Oh, yes. Some of them have displayed a remarkable amount of individual will. They're usually hunted down. Yes. Well, that's unfortunate. You would also crave brains. <laughs> that sounds disgusting. Okay, uh, where is... Do you have any idea where this ring is? Yes, the, the trolls direction. have it. Yes, but uh, which direction? Mm. This way, that way, that just, way? Just south of us here. Can't be more than a few hundred feet. Uh, sorry, a few thousand feet. Can you call them? Call them? I've called them all kinds of names, but I don't know what you mean. Uh, they don't exactly come to my beck and call, and I'd prefer not to face off against them directly. Myself wouldn't be quite the same as you all doing so. Your clearing seems like a ideal battlefield. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't know if I'd want it to shed any blood here. That might ruin the enchantment, after all. Enchantment? What? Of a sort, yes. What? Can you ex can you explain? Probably. Now, what kind of is enchantment is it? Stop beating around the bush. Well, it's more of a little memory of home than anything else. But I can manifest those if I need to. Little bits here and there. If it keeps the creepy trees at bay, then great. It's more of calling back to their favorite nature. Plus, when he kind of taps the Sony sitting on, this thing needs to be kept safe, after all. What is it? Oh, wouldn't you like to know? Yes, I would. Well, I don't know what you're doing here, so I can't really tell you that. We're trying to leave. I go over and look at it. We're trying to, uh... Okay. Find it looks like a smooth, flat stone, about five feet, boulder, gray, featureless. Can mm. I figure out what it is? It's a large boulder, five feet high, gray, featureless. I turn to the candle. Is this a large boulder I see before me, gray and featureless? And the candle looks at the stone, looks at you trying to figure out what you're expecting it to say, and shrugs and nods. Mm. Great. He said the trolls were for itself. Yes, we should leave now if you wish to remain you. Yes, we should. Uh, all right, to the south, everybody. We'll be, we'll be right back. Good luck. Thanks. I wish you the best of it. Try not to die or be eaten. Yeah, we'll do our best. Or worse. Yes. Awkward goodbyes and... Guys, okay, we need to kill trolls and find a ring. It has a green stone on it. I'd rather do it here. Do what? Mm. Do that. Here. The trolls. Here. Here, the ring, the trolls, the whole show up. 
do you mm. have a way of calling are you them? are you guys moving to the directly to the bottom south or you're gonna rendezvous yeah. with them first and then go around i'm going to the south because there is I'm a much rendezvous time left. with elzera and the others okay and so zach is like right. okay we're going and kind of walks off where the two of you are probably walking back we're slower to the uh, are you walking with him or are you walking because because i'm going back to elzera and radix slower <laughs> it's not really an answer. Which direction uh, are you heading? It's it's all one direction, really. Uh, they're more coming off of the east side, and they're going. And he's leaving off the south. And, and at a at a pace of ten, they're all yeah. over there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you slowly turn and kind of yeah, uh, having not to make the decision. But by the time you've made a decision, they'll I'll, probably it'll be very clear. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, how do you propose calling them over here? Uh, do you say that behind you? Yeah. Mm. Oh. Uh, I will cast Long Strider on you. Oh, cool. It's like a plus 10 more. The, 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 sort of the beat probably picks up a little bit into it. Clark smiles and picks up the pace. There you go. Deciding to uh, follow Zacchaeus. Do trolls have good hearing? Do I remember reading about that? About trolls? Average. Before? No. Actually, I'm going to cast it on me and him. Oh, so what's your question? There we go. How should we call them here? Make a lot of noise. Mm. We could have got our friend to do it, but hey, that time has passed. Hey, you green, ugly, snot-nosed bastards! Yeah, that works, too. And as you yell out in that direction, you see the entirety of the wall of thorns kind of shift and start stabbing in random directions as it's trying to grasp whatever just yelled. Mm, works for me. Um, do you hear anything? You can see them kind of tensing around you, but you're on the different side of it from where he is at. I'd rather not go in there myself, but if we can draw them out here. <laughs> and if, yeah. they are, if they are a couple of miles away, then they're not going to hear us from here. It was about an hour ago when you last encountered them, and they were heading south at that point, presumably going back to wherever they, they stay. Radix. Is she with us, by the way, or is she? No, she's, she's still with on me. the other side with uh, with her and with uh, Kuzima in that direction as well. I'll throw a rock into the woods. Okay, Just out of spite. Um, That's a message. You could come over here. We're at the edge of the place. And the rock kind of clatters, and you can see. I, I look at kind of him like it. antagonizing the forest, and I'm just like, "Do you think I'm an idiot?" <laughs> this time it seems you like the, the rustling lasts a little bit we longer. We must find this within the next couple of hours or he dies. It is up to you. I really don't want to go in there. I don't want to fight in there. That too. Hmm. Can you scream louder than I scream? I'm, I'm a librarian, so I'm really not good at screaming. <laughs> I think your scream would have been fine. And it shows us that it won't work. Or do you know, maybe I wasn't offensive enough. What is the most offensive thing you can think about when you think of trolls? Their smell, mostly, I would imagine. Not their sense of smell. I know you're going there. I mean, they probably stink. That's offensive. Yes. Hey, you guys stink! <laughs> I can perhaps find them and bring them here, but I have to be alone to do it. And naked. <laughs> no. No, not naked, but... Uh, that would be really dangerous. I understand. Why do you I have, have to go alone? And she seems very timid and, and very worried about I this. cannot... With my training, I can sneak while moving at full speed. I cannot do it with anyone else with me. Also, I have spells that will help protect me from being attacked and allow me to move faster through the forest. I believe I can reach there in a few minutes, but it may take me time to search. But if something so, goes wrong, we won't even know. That is correct. I don't think we should go alone. This place is too dangerous for that. No one should go alone. So do you think maybe they heard us and they're just being hampered by the forest? No. I don't th the no. forest was hampering them earlier. I saw it through the magic eye. I didn't see it. Mm. 
it could be a, pos a possibility. So if, if we just wait here a few moments, last... they may come charging through. At which point I'll be right behind you, using you as a shield. They will not. They are miles away in the woods. <sighs> they will not even have heard this. We can't even and make that much ground in two hours. I can, but only by myself. I assume we're all kind of. I'm assuming you move close to each other because because yeah. uh, yeah. I'm on mm -hmm. the other side of the clearing. Yeah. Well, I was, I was aiming for them, but they seem to want to go for him. So I'm hanging out with I guess the two of them. In the midway between yeah. the three, the three of them. <laughs> Organization. Well, I, I sped him up. Yeah. So. I'm not going that way because he keeps antagonizing the forest that way. The trolls. Uh, in the forest. And I'm not going into the clearing. Okay. I don't care enough. For Zakis to go into a fake magical <laughs> clearing <laughs> that it, I have zero fake? trust of. It's certainly a, a, a landish that is here, but is it fake? We haven't really tested that. He said it was an enchantment. Of a sort. Clark. Yeah. Keep them from following me. Sure. And I'll zip off into the woods. Well, good luck. Mm -hmm. I am casting freedom of Where movement on myself okay. so that nothing slows me down. I am um, cast you can still be attacked. Freedom of movement yes. doesn't uh, prevent attacks. I was getting to that. Okay. I am casting Zephyr Strike, which means my movement does not provoke opportunity attacks. Oh! They can still see you coming, but yes. Yep, but they can't attack me until it's their turn. Effectively, yes. Yeah. By the time you're uh, <laughs> and Not necessarily. They can see him coming and, and be ready to attack when he comes through. Okay. So It's not an immunity. Yeah. It's as close as I can get. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, we're not going to reach there and going to... Uh, then I can play a Mind Flayer. <laughs> no, Mark would play a, a Mind Flayer. <laughs> <laughs> but I won't. Um, and yeah, that's... Uh, okay, so it was... Uh, actually, I could cast Invisibility instead if it's a sight thing, just they seem to be able to see through Invisibility. Yeah, I mean, they can see, uh, the, they can see the magic eyes. I think you could probably make the assumption that they see magic. Yeah, or they've got blind sense like the dolls do. Um, no, I'll go with that. Okay, so freedom of movement and Zephyr Strike. Yep. Zephyr Strike only lasts a minute. Yep. In one minute, I can go 900 feet if I dash. Um, wow. Um, and I'll cast it. Uh, it's a level one, so I cast it. 900 feet, minute. how do you calculate that? I currently have a speed of 45. If I dash, I'm going 90. I can do that every turn. Then there's 10 turns to a minute. That's 900 feet. Okay, constant running will be tiring, but yes. That's fine. Um, okay. Old cardio. I mean, that's a minute of running. Yeah. <laughs> Some of us have issues with that. Um, yeah. Okay. I couldn't do it. But I could do it. <laughs> let's let's yes. see how many attacks you get along the way. Because you're, you're, are you stealthing? Because you can't run and stealth at the same time. Unless you have something that does that. Uh, well, actually, no, I could, I'd have to go 450 feet, but I could stealth at that point. Okay. Um, so, so, yeah, I'll do it stealthily, so okay. I'll go 450, so it's going to take me a... Hmm. So, let me see... Let me see four. Just trying to think if they said... Well, four. Yeah, I can, I'll go in about 2,000 feet, which is about four minutes. Uh, and see where we are then, because if I don't hear them, I'll just have to head back out because I can't go any further. Okay, so you're casting Zephyr Strike four times then in that process? Yep. Okay. Uh, make your stealth check. Let's see. Uh, 30. Okay. <coughs> okay, one of those. Uh, does a 15 hit you? Mm, nope. Okay. As you're moving forward through that first uh, that first minute, um, you do notice this sort of uh, uh, shuffling of the things that you're moving through. It is difficult terrain. I don't know mm -hmm. if you have something that affects Freedom that. of movement. Okay. Um, so as you're kind of dashing around, you do notice that it is extraordinarily dense through here. Um, and at one point, the entire place does try to close in on you, but you dash out of the way before that happens. Um, okay. And does a... Nope, that won't hit. So the same thing happens again. 
Uh, this time, one of the trees actually cracks and seems to fall right in front of you, and you kind of nimbly duck under it before it pops over. Uh, Good, because I can't hop over it. Uh, 16 to hit? Uh, yeah, that just hits me. Okay. Uh, this time, it seems like it's it's uh, closing up behind you, and you, you can kind of see it going and catching up a little bit faster and faster until suddenly it snaps in front of you. Uh, you take 11 points of piercing damage as it snaps and it kind of no, catches no, you. And you kind of have to pull yourself, make a strength check. Uh, there's a sec, I'm trying to remember what I... Dexterity and No, I think that's a 45. <laughs> Sorry? So dex- uh, uh, strength, <laughs> strength check to escape being grappled. Um, if I'm escaping oh, grappled... Actually, like freedom, freedom of your mind, it doesn't, yeah. doesn't actually grapple you. You kind of have to tear yourself away from it though. Um, and now you're bleeding a little bit. Uh, actually, sorry, bleeding now. It doesn't matter. Uh, and once again, you see you kind of anticipate the roots now growing underneath you, trying to stab you from beneath. And you kind of dodge off to the right and then dodge off to the left as these giant spikes of roots kind of pop up around you. Uh, but you're managing to get there. And then the last one. Uh, actually, sorry. One. Wow. You never think the perception of the woods would be that bad. Uh, it's a 21 hit. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, for 12 points of piercing damage, um, as this time um, there's a, a, a crash from overhead and an entire branch kind of swings down and smashes into you, uh, kind of taking you back a little bit, and then you kind of flip back onto your feet and then start darting forward as thun, 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 little uh, thorns start spinning up behind you. Uh, make a perception check. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, they're not. Mm. 17. 17. Um, up ahead of you, you hear the, the uh, trolls arguing again. Um, they seem to be arguing over something. Uh, the, the deeper voice of the four-armed troll seems to be arguing that it's his, and the other one is pleading, No, no! I found it. Mine. Well, how far away do they sound? 30 feet. Just beyond the clearing up ahead. You can't really see that far given how thick the woods are, but you can hear them. Hmm. Okay. Um, in Undercommon... Something's coming! You hear the, the deeper of the two voices yell out as you get closer. Yep. Uh, in Undercommon... Uh, I say, uh, mm. I try to make my voice as deep as possible while only <laughs> being two feet tall. <laughs> uh, um, this will be a performance check. It's going to be a hard performance check. Uh, because, sure. Uh, well, all I'm saying is uh, I heard that there were a couple of big dumb trolls up here that had stolen a ring. Okay. Uh, uh, still a performance check. That's a 14, so that's an 18. Okay. Bard. Okay. Um, the, uh, the deeper of the two voices uh, says, I knew it. There's something out there. Get it. And the other one said, I don't know what it is. Seems hesitant. Uh, those of weak mind can rarely stand up to real opposition. That way. Go through the thicket that way. Uh, and you hear crashing coming towards you. Okay. I will uh, continue back. Uh, I am... Have you make stealth again? This time with disadvantage if you're actually speaking. Uh, oh, I'm not going to be stealthy at all. I'm okay. going for all-out speed. Okay. Uh, so I run as fast as I can. Um... I will, uh, let's see, stupid concentration limit, um, just trying to think, I will tell the, uh, a 12 doesn't matter, right? Dolls, uh, yeah, no. Okay. You so hear crashing through the woods a bit distance away. Uh, crack, 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 bam, as a large boulder is uh, off to one side of you. Actually, I will go slow and stealthy 
And, uh, however, I will cast uh, Minor Illusion. Uh, just Its maximum range is 30 feet, so it's not terribly far away, but I will make uh, crashing sounds and ha ha, missed me uh, sort of things while I uh, move at a normal like uh, stealthy rate uh, and uh, otherwise head back the way I came in. I'm just sort of Adding the uh, the voice off to the side, so okay. So yeah, for my stealth, I get a twenty three. Okay. Um, what was the minor illusion against her? Uh, basically, just ha ha missed me okay. and that sort of thing to keep them going in the same direction I'm going in, but not where I actually am. Okay. Uh, um, you are kind of moving normally, I guess. Um. Well, I can. Uh, da, 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 I'd be going about forty-five feet around, which would be my normal movement, okay. uh, so that they can keep up if they're running fast. Crashing right directly at you from the from the briars is the smaller one, honing in directly on you. You hear crashing from another rock being thrown off in the distance. It seems to have noticed where you are. Okay. In that case, uh, yeah. Just next round, I just. Uh, dash and uh, hoof it fast and uh, basically I'm just trying to kite them mm -hmm. forward. If they get close, I move fast. If they don't get close, then I keep A rock sails right on by you. Uh, and, yeah, Too I fast! Just... Says the one behind you. Huh. Incompetent. Oh, sorry. You're too stupid to understand incompetent. That's three syllables. Oh. Yeah, four syllables. Uh, does a 19 wow. hit you? Yes. <laughs> As a boulder sails across and crashes through, giving you eight points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. Kind of hitting you straight in the chest, knocks you over a little bit. They can barely throw farther than they can run. Okay. I pop back up after and say, huh. Hit like uh, one of those elves. Okay. Uh, make a uh, persuade or intimidation check, I guess. Is that an, in an insult skill? <laughs> That's kind of what intimidation is. It's making someone angry. Uh, I got a 15. Okay. Uh, you hear it yell in, in an incomprehensible uh, non-word language as it charges through the forest for you. You seem to have the attention of one of them. The other one does not seem to have, have uh, left. Mm. Okay. Well, uh, I will lead it on for a bit. Uh, and occasionally let out just a very loud uh, illusion yell of, huh. You, what is your intent here? Let's do this. I am trying to pull level. them back to the clearing. Okay. So you want to pull this one yes. all the way back? Uh, no, I want to get both of them to come back because I don't okay. know which one's on, the ring's on. Um, uh, so I'm going to try to circle a bit and uh, have the illusion say, huh, you're right. Other one too slow. Okay. Only you get treasure. What we'll do is we'll make this a skill challenge. Sure. Um, four before three of failure, so four successes before three to have them successfully kite all the way back. Sure. It's an opposed roll in this case. Um, so you choose the appropriate skill. Um, I don't want to... It's basically four different things you're going to do, though, so don't repeat the skills. It's okay. Um, I have all four of these skills at exactly the same level. Okay. <laughs> so, but it depends um, on, on what you're using because that changes what they use. Yeah. Um, well, first one will be performance. Okay. And that is to represent one. Um, pretending to be another creature? Of yeah, well, pretend, pretending to almost collude with the guy that's catching up to me okay. about some sort of treasure that the other one's not going to get because he's too slow and dumb. All right. So it's a roll off between you and them. Ooh, that's not good. Yeah, it's not great here. That's either. an eleven. Uh, that beats the eight. <laughs> so you have one success. Uh, okay. As you kind of uh, uh, try to get them to be arguing with each other, and it seems to be working a little bit, where the larger one is uh, is telling the other one to go do it, and the smaller one is saying, "Well, you do it if you're so good at it." So they seem to be getting a little bit of argument between the two. Well, I'm going to uh, rabbit season, duck season them, and. Uh, as the, the one saying, you go do it. No, you go do it. I'm going to say, uh, uh, basically, uh, yes, you go do it. The big one's too dumb to get it. 
the treasure uh, the treasure should be yours if you can beat me. Okay, and what's that skill? That's going to be uh, deception. Okay. I got 19 there. Uh, they did not. <laughs> that was a three. Um, as you hear the, the larger one, treasure, more treasure. We will have the treasure, all of it. Bards love big dumb creatures. Um, that's two successes. That's gonna be, well, perhaps the two of you together could beat me and take the treasure. But I don't know, you're awfully weak and stupid. <laughs> that's going to be, uh, uh, maybe intimidation, just trying to anger them. Okay. Although, it's really more scaring, but, uh, uh, do I have anything else that would fit? No, actually, I'll use persuasion for that. Okay. 23. <laughs> well, that's I keep rolling three higher numbers. Like. Um, uh, as uh, the uh, bigger one says, Together we shall catch you and eat your bones. You will make us hungry, hungry for more. Well, and the last three one... Successes. Uh, I'm going to use nature. I'm going to claim that they are... I don't know how they survived in this wonderful forest being this pathetic and dumb. And uh, and uh, as my uh, my mother said, you should always leave them wanting more. Okay. That actually, whoops, dang it. That actually have a higher bonus. Two and a roll to one. Oh no. So that's uh, a that seven. was a 14 for them. Okay. That's one failure. So three successes, one failure. Um, there's a laugh that comes from the large one. We survive because we are gifted by the forest. It is our home and you are an invader. It will work with us. I'll make a survival. Uh, that is a 17 to hit. Okay, that hits. Uh, that's five points of piercing damage, as indeed it seems like the forest is working with them. Okay. Then I, w then I want to make a survival check and say, then the forest will be mine uh, after you are defeated and forced to kneel before me. Uh, um. How is that survival? Mm. Okay, I'll go <laughs> so with intimidation, like intimidation for that one. <laughs> okay, have you already used intimidation? Once, nope, right? okay. I used persuasion, deception, and performance. Okay. Uh, Thirteen. That's better than their six. Yay! <laughs> so that's your four. Um, as they uh, they uh, both let out. Actually, first of all, the larger one lets out a terrifying howl, uh, and you kind of get the sense of the howl of the hunt, and they proceed to follow you back. Now, okay. are you hiding at all, or are you going to run right back? Uh, well, I'm going to do it, well, it depends. If it seems like they can keep up or keep up with or surpass my 45 feet stealthy movement, then I'll just go all out speed and do 90 per turn. They are charging through, smashing through the forest as they go okay. at full run. Okay, I don't so know they what would, They would forward. overcome you 45 okay. feet pretty quickly. Yeah, then I will just uh, run like blazes uh, to get back, uh, and I'll keep up the, um, the one that says no uh, attacks of opportunity. Okay. Um, that's about the best I can uh, do. Okay. We'll see if I make it back alive. <laughs> so that's a 16 to hit. That hits. That's uh, seven points of piercing as you're running through and not not hiding quite as much from this and the amount of noise and destruction that you're raising. Uh, the uh, forest is coming alive all around you now trying to actively uh, intercede on their behalf. Okay. That is a 24 um, hit. Well, oh, uh, yep. yeah, I am going to do something because uh, uh, I am going to attempt to drink the potion out of one of my dolls because <laughs> I'm down to 13 hit points right now. Okay, um, and that'll let me know if this is a possibility. The cork does not remove, okay. and you have a sense that if you did try, it would it would it would it'll end the creature. Okay. Well, in that case, uh, I say uh, my apologies. And I popped the cork. Okay, it goes inanimate immediately. Yep. Uh, and you drain down the which potion it was. Uh, it's a lesser healing. Okay, it's not much. Hey, I maxed it though. Woo. That's ten points. So yes, the twenty-four hits me. Okay, uh, that does eleven points of piercing. Yeah. Wow. As this time, one of the one of the trees erupts right right underneath you, and while you manage to kind of ride it and leap off and kind of uh, leap off uh, into into safety. The thing had pierced your foot by that point. Uh, and so you got one foot which is kind of bleeding and leading a bit of a trail. Okay, I am going, in that case I'm going to use a bonus action to healing word myself. Okay, good idea. 
This would do no good if I don't lead them back to the rest of the group. Don't think a 12 hits. Nope. Okay. Let's see. That's four, six. Oops. Uh, that's 12. Does a 17 hit? Yes. Okay. Uh, as a boulder comes sailing through the uh, forest for, oh yeah, they have a bonus on that one, uh, for eight points of blood okay. damage. Kind of randomly thrown in your direction, as you can hear them now crashing all around you, them trying to uh, get at you. And let's see if you can crash to the edge. Uh, does a, what is it, uh, 16 hit you? Yes. Okay. As you're right on the edge, you can actually see the lighter uh, colored ground cover in front of you. Uh, Splat. As as you're kind of running forward, you can see the uh, the pincers of the of the uh, the ground or rather the the thorns and the vines kind of closing over the distance, uh, and it does stab at the. Mm -hmm. Where are we, Dave? Oh, it's like under the thing. No, I'll get it later. I have more. It's far under the thing. Uh, that is eight points of piercing damage and make a dexterity saving throw. Let's see. Why did I roll that one? Uh, Fourteen. Now I realize it didn't matter anyway because you mm. can't be held. But no, nope. basically it pinions you there and you kind of drag yourself. What have you guys been doing in the meantime? <laughs> yeah, before yeah, before you get towards the, towards the we're at the okay. we're, I believe we've moved to the edge of the clearing. Which edge? That's an excellent question. The south edge. So the edge. I mean, not, he went through the edge where they are still currently. Not sitting. close enough to be like grappled by the forest, but just close enough to yell insults and hopefully be heard. Okay, are you facing the south? Yeah. Okay. Um, and doing it for five minutes. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's still alive? Um, you might hear the crashing coming. The tingling coming sensation going stops in your arm. Oh. Yep. It just feels numb now. Um. I'm not. He keeps himself in the forest, and mm -hmm. it's getting really red. I'm and not going over there. Now the entire southern edge of this clearing is just sort of twisting and turning and growing more and more agitated and aware. And you can see where it's kind of seething forward a little bit. And weirdly enough, the small little clover at your feet is kind of keeping it at bay, strangely. It kind of wavers a little bit, but then the this, this summer breeze kind of throws through, reinforcing the edge. Clark makes ready for battle. Mm -hmm. okay. I hear something. What's that when I'm like? getting close uh, to... Sorry. Weapons out, sharpening, deep breathing, stretch. Okay. It's probably going to be at least a half an hour. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, probably longer if he even makes it back. That's all right. I have an arrow knocked. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to scooch to a place where I can see where Kazaima went into the forest. Okay. You can kind of make it out. I picture you as kind of a dead east and he went dead south. Okay. So you can kind of see it at an angle there if you want, or you can move across the other side if you want. Yeah. I'd maybe, like, scooch a little bit so that it's an easier shot. Okay. Um, but... I'm hearing my headphones in the background here. Uh... When I see that I'm close to the edge, I'm going to uh, assume that Clark hopefully is still in the spot he was in and message him with uh, incoming. Okay, before you do that, yeah, as you're waiting there, you, you hear the song play up once again. Uh, each of you make a charisma saving throw. Sure. All of us? Mm hmm. 17 plus zero, 17. 17, okay. 18. 18. Not 20. Not 20. So 19. Okay. <laughs> um, you, you, <laughs> you, uh, you hear the song starting up once more. This time it feels a little more urgent um, and seems a little more, um, more concerned almost. Uh, but you feel the warm wind press over you and you kind of shake your head and ignore it. Um, Can we figure out if Corin is trying to like charm the trolls? You could probably ask him what he's doing, but sort of that, you have no idea. Some magical effect seems to be triggered when he's playing that, but you're not sure what. I'll ask him later. Um, and uh, so, uh, about five minutes pass, you've just gotten your weapons out and kind of starting to clear them out. Uh, and then you hear on the bottom edge, actually, you hear in your voice, first of all, or head, first of all, incoming from Kazaima and Kazaima's voice, which has only taken about five minutes. And then he crashes through the edge of the forest. I get okay. And you can Boop! now hear easily Squeezed coming out of the tree behind like him the stone. smashing and crashing of, uh, of larger creatures, presumably those two trolls. Here we go. As I'm flying through the air, it's like, 
I hope you guys can fight these because I'm almost dead. The music stops as uh, as Corrin looks over, confused. Wow, that didn't take very long. Did you get it? It's coming. And you can hear the crashing. It's like, oh no, what did you do? That'll never do. They can't enter here. It's okay, we can fight them at the edge. Uh, and now incoming from the edge are several rocks. Um, rocks. Rocks. So a 19 for you. No, that's a yeah, that's 19. A, yeah, that is. Yeah, you see. <laughs> that is uh, 11 points of bludgeon damage. It's a large rock. As you're kind of like, the edge? Thunk! You're hitting the, hitting the chest by this large, massive rock, which kind of puts you back a few feet. Uh, to the side, Elzera 15 goes. for Elzera. <laughs> Actually, sorry, no, 15 for Clark. Yeah, that'll hit. Um, Shut up, As five points of bludgeoning damage, as a rock kind of, you're reaching down for your weapons, you see it coming, and you kind of let it glance off your shoulder okay. a little bit. It hurts, but it wasn't too bad. Can I do a, an uncanny dodge for that? You can, because you saw the rock coming so up out of the thing. That makes it three? Uh, makes it uh, five. two. Two? Two. Got it. All right. They have not emerged from the forest. Okay. Uh, and you can hear them growling now in the forest. The growl seems to echo. And all around you, you can feel the uh, vines start to twist and turn. Uh, Radix looks terrified. Um, and uh, you make a uh, wisdom saving throw. Uh, 19. 19. Woo. You feel this wave of fear pass over you. But then you kind of take a deep breath and let it pass. Uh, Radix, however, disappears as she lets out a little cry. And she's just gone. You don't see her where she goes. So, um, we're just about time for break. So what I'm thinking is maybe we take an early break. I'll set up for this particular whatever this is. <laughs> sounds uh, like a fight. <laughs> sounds like it's probably going to be a fight of some kind. Uh, uh, and I will just get the right... Uh, pause screen. There we go. So for those of you uh, watching at home, we'll be back in uh, about 15 minutes if you're watching live or uh, Clark is being killed by the sun. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, or we'll be uh, almost no time at all if you're watching on the, there, i got to say it, on the VOD. <laughs> on the VOD. It's kind of neat. We shall return shortly. And we're back. I've already preemptively turned on the map screen because it feels like people want to fight these trolls after all. Yeah, it's only my life in the balance. I mean. So as we return, um, what I've sketched out here is essentially the clearing. So me and her. The here, right? uh, the stone is at the uh, center. Yes, that's a huge D12 that I have. Uh, on top uh, sits a. It's now, not one of somewhat, mine. So <laughs> I, I have my own dice. Let's, let's be fair. I have. I don't quite have as many. Well, actually, I might have as many dice as you. I have a lot of dice. Mind you, you didn't collect them in two years. No, no, <laughs> no. It's been a lifetime. Um, a never-ending lifetime. On top of the stone, of course, uh, sits Corrin. Uh, the trolls are not visible yet. They're not within the edge. Now, that, that circle represents the edge of the clearing around. Um, because we don't quite have the right size, each square will be... Uh, will be double, so 10 feet. Keep that in mind when you're calculating your movement, your distances, and so forth. Uh, but place yourselves as appropriate. Uh, so that's about where we would you be, guys right? would be on this side. Oh, it's okay. a um, So we're going to designate north as being where the. Uh, Can I have the marker? I'll put north. Sure. Hand that over. That? Just because the spins. Oh, is over yep. So let's put north at that north end. Um, I was kind of orienting it so that north was away from me at that particular point. Um, is this here? Yeah. Yep. And because I'm uh, just on the edge there. Okay, and so we would be on. And you'd be on the other side. Yep. So. I would have moved about there, and I don't know. Uh, she and is. she is vanished. We just set her back off <laughs> the side of the board. Oof. Oof. That's interesting. Okay. <laughs> Who knows where um, she is? So I will say that that you would have recognized that she's afraid. Yeah. Uh, she's been kind of on the edge all this time, and when that. That loud uh, war shout from these twirls came in. She just lost it and has vanished somewhere in there. Let us roll initiative, mm. shall we? Oh, yes. Mm. 
purple and green halicon dice yeah. is still rolling. Um, so let us start with uh, 20 to 25. 22. Or, 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 ooh, look at that. Uh, Clark. I will be the first to die. It's going to go. All right. All right. Why did I not write down your character names? Because now I can't remember who you are. <laughs> uh, it's only been two years. Yeah. Let's write down that guy. <laughs> the one girl. Uh, I, I wrote down Kuzumaya as Kuz. Kuzumaya. Uh, Kuzumaya. <laughs> That's why it's Kuz. I wouldn't make a mistake. Just Kuz. All right. So you got a 22. All right. Uh, 15 to 20. Uh, 16. 18 oh, should go for them. Okay. So we'll do, first of all, I'll just write these down first of all. So 18 for Kuzima. Uh, you get a... Uh, 16. 16. 17. And 17. Okay, that's all the PCs. Let me roll for those guys. By the way. Uh, Potions. Okay. Uh, <laughs> You're over there. We're over here. <laughs> just say it. Run away. <laughs> no, it's point to say it, but... <laughs> all right. Slow troll. Good. <laughs> and oh, slower troll. <laughs> All right. And one last one. Faster. So. All right. So Clark, then I am bound. Zachis, what is your dex bonus? Plus one. Plus one? Okay. So, star B, that is actually Corrin. Uh, Zachis. Uh, Zara. Star A, that's Radix. One is the two-armed troll. Two is the four-armed troll. I should have made them four and two, maybe. But now you do not see the the trolls as of yet. They are still well within the thicket. We hear them about there. You can hear them off in that distance. Yeah. Um, but you're not exactly sure where they are. Clark, what are you doing? Uh, well. <clears throat> and Corin has said they can't enter the thicket. That's what he yeah. was surprised when when uh, Kuzima came back and they heard the shouts of them in the distance. Uh, Clark will ready himself and yell back to the little person on the rock saying, if you want your ring, you're going to let them in. Um, I don't like this, but that'll be on his turn to do anything else. You're yeah. holding an action, essentially? Yeah, he'll, he'll ready to strike the first opponent he sees. Okay. Uh, and right now you're placed like about 60 feet back. Are uh, we at the edge with Zacchaeus? We or? assume somewhere nearby there, yeah. Yeah. I was and like... really should be... I wasn't at the edge because this forest was kind of scaring me, so I would have been like yeah. 20 feet away probably. Yeah, that's <laughs> what you, you said 10 foot earlier. Yeah, yeah, I think you said you were outside of it grasping at you, yeah. but you're fairly close. So you would be basically 10 feet okay. at the edge. Um, I kind of picture Clark, who was caught a little bit aback from all this, because you were still doing all your weapons, probably mm -hmm. wouldn't be doing it right there. Mm -hmm. So, but also you can take your turn and kind sure. of pick up your weapons and be ready yep. to go. Uh, let's see. Um, Corin um, just pull the bandage. Says, uh, "This is a terrible idea, but you'd better be certain about this." And he plays a tune. And as he plays the tune, you can feel the weave of magic fading around you. The carpet of beautiful small clover wilts and dies, revealing barren ground. Um, he himself appears to vanish, and you feel the coldness now of festering taking over. Before he does that, I take my turn. <laughs> Oh, we, yeah, sorry, we're in the middle of your turn when, yeah. when uh, everything else is crazy. So. Um, yeah, I pick myself up off the ground and uh, I will uh, pull out a uh, sleep dart and uh, get ready to dart the first enemy I see. Okay. Zakis, you're up. You can now see that the, the carpet of green around you has faded 
all it seems like all bright colors have suddenly faded. You also notice as you are staring straight at the uh, the uh, the grounds that the uh, the vines that were pushing up against the barrier and being kept back are now starting to move inward. So I will uh, go as far away as I can. So three, and I'll hold an action. Disintegrate as soon as I see as soon as I see a troll come through, he's getting blasted. Okay. Uh, let's see. That's your turn, Elzara. Um, you you see the the what was a beautiful glade in front of you, vanish with his word. I vanish know with it his was music. fake. Um, and you kind of feel loss, like you had doubted that this was real, but in that moment, it had to have been real, and it was gone now. Um, I am going to move up forty five feet. Okay, I'm gonna move her in. Uh, so that'll be four squares. 10, 20, 30, 40. And no half squares. Yep. Sorry for the people who actually are fast. Uh -huh. um, I'm assuming next round you'd get five movement and just go four, five, four, five. I'm not going to bother counting it because it just makes it more tra more crazy. We just we round down like we always do in D&D. Sure, but we normally don't use 10-foot axes either, so it's kind of penalizing anyone who's got extra movement. It's a little bit of inaccuracy for a little more speed, so... Sure. A little more adds up, especially when you're on the other side of the board, but okay. Um, and I am going to... What am I going to do? There's no trees around me right now. Doesn't seem to be, although they're all agitated. In fact, around the circle, you can see that it's all agitated. Okay, give me two seconds. Yep, I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm going to turn into fire. Okay. As you blaze upward, someone wanted to get your mini. Uh, wow. Transform mm -hmm. into. Uh, you're large in that form? Or? Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're just about the same size as they are. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, that's a bonus action. Yes. Um, which means... Oh, later. Yeah. Give me two seconds here. Um, that changes my speed to 50 feet. So that's 60, so I'm going to move another... Two? Tw 20 sp uh, spaces. Yeah, or er, 20, 20 feet. So, yep, so. more Place it there for now, see if I can find the yeah. so battery for it. I, I move... 20. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I am going to hold an action. Um, I am going to just hold a multi-attack. Okay. So. Let's see. She's going to do that. Okay. Ah, uh, the trolls. Ah, uh, the trolls. Let's see. Um. Hmm. Okay. Um. Do, do, do. Okay. So. Despite the size difference, this is the normal troll and this is the forearm troll who's actually larger, but they're both large creatures. Uh, I only happen to have one troll. Um, charges straight out where Kuzaima was. 30, 40, and comes to a stop. So, you do get to do your reaction. Does it save versus, does it do a 19 dex save? Uh, I get to roll that. Mm -hmm. So, let's see, dex. That's cocked. That is not enough for a 19. Hey. 20. 30. 39 plus 40. Ooh. 79. Mm -hmm. 79. Nice. Let's see. I guess Zacchaeus that. opens up with the big guns. Well, yeah. Zacchaeus doesn't have much time to live. Zacchaeus doesn't get a fuck. <laughs> uh, what kind of damage is that? Is it necromantic, I think? Uh, I think so. No, uh, I don't think it's necromantic. It's not on the card? It's easier to find it in here. <laughs> <laughs> the cards are nice, but it's just not that useful. I'll probably look it up just as quick. Disintegrate. Force damage. Force damage, yeah. Okay. 
uh, as this massive amount of force comes out of uh, Zakas, as you see this thing looming over you as it's closer and closer. It's even taller than you, although not by as much as uh, the rest of them. It's only about three feet taller than you. Uh, and you kind of hit it nastily with this, this spell, you release finally. And it kind of caves in its chest, uh, and you can see kind of the ribs sticking out and, and part of it blowing out the back. Uh, and it lets out a loud hell, uh, yell of anger, uh, and then gets right in front of you and going to make an attack on you. Uh, we'd get, well, I get pass through his space. Yeah, uh, I'd get mine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I will dart it. I'll go for the plus 10 damage. Okay. It's right next to an ally. Ooh. Okay. 17, 27, 22. It's next to an ally. It doesn't give you advantage. It just gives you sneak attack. No. Uh, pack tactics. Oh, okay. Allies yep. within five feet. Yeah, I forgot. Uh, so 22 to hit. Uh, that's a hit. And that is 17 piercing damage and a check against whatever poison that is. Okay. Uh, Sleepy time. That's uh, that. Okay. Yeah, I think I did say the sleep one. Yeah. Um, so in that case, it's that sleep potion that was like super super effective mm -hmm. that we had for, or for her. Uh, it was it's been dipped in that. Okay. So whatever that does. So the little dart uh, jabs in. You can see it kind of kicking uh, just below, behind where one of the ribs is blown out and kind of goes inside. You see it go. Eh. Oh shoot! I forget. <laughs> one more point from the sneak attack. Okay. <laughs> It's looking terrible. It's, its entire center form has basically caved in at this particular point. Uh, so it's going to get its attack. That may be the only thing it gets a chance to do. Uh, as it tries to bite down on Zakis. Uh That is a 23 to hit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, give, give it the arm. For five points of piercing damage. <laughs> Can I oh, that's less than we need an illicit troll. And a trollithid. Uh, let's see, that is a 24 to hit. Oh yeah, I have 11 AC. <laughs> okay, and the other one hits as well then. Um, as the arms go <laughs> cutting across you, uh, that is 14 points of slashing damage. For Wait, the first I, gotta, hit. I, I gotta do math, hold on, hold on. So, 29, 19, okay. <laughs> this okay. is fucking Graham, y'all. <laughs> uh, and 11 points of slashing damage. Yeah, we didn't have any time to heal or anything. Eight. <laughs> Clark is going into this bloodied. So. Mm -hmm. so but he's probably dying next year. It looks pretty bad, but uh, I think Zacchus is also looking a little bit rough hey, at the moment. Hit point, brothers. Uh, let's see. We uh. both get eight. <laughs> uh, uh, now, okay, that was its turn. Yep. <laughs> Barely got its turn. That's kind of funny. Uh... Actually, you reacted before it had its turn? No, it got to move, so it's already Yeah, I reacted to it yeah. moving into okay. the area. Same. Um, then, the other one. Let's see. Yeah, they're not terribly intelligent creatures. Um, so it's going to just charge in, crashing through right beside where Clark is. Ah, sweet. Uh, you will get your reaction. Sweet. I would like to uh, <coughs> try to flay it alive <laughs> from a distance. Flaying it dead is kind of silly. Yeah. Um, I'm going to try to hit it as it's crashing through at 10 feet because I got uh, reach. Okay. Flay it alive. Flay it's a natural 20. <laughs> Woo there you go. Nice. Uh, that is a hit. Let's cool. reap some shit. So that's. Uh, Can you get another act attack left after? Yes. Five. Nice. Um, I think four of that being necrotic. Okay. As you slash into it, the the blade kind of almost 
happily in your mind uh, is is extending, kind of cutting it through the shadow, kind of curling around on the inside as it makes a deep cut across his chest. Okay, I think that's a reaction. I can't actually do anything else. Uh, uh, you get your your other attack. Your reaction is your attack. Yes. Yep. Okay. So you'd have another attack, and then that I think would be it. Uh, sorry, your reaction is your action. Yeah. yeah. You spend your reaction to do your action, so okay. whatever your attack gives you. Well, on a crit or KO, I get to attack as a bonus action. So uh, that's not a, not that's what I'm saying. It's not yeah, my you turn don't have a bonus have action. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what I'm saying. Okay, yeah. Yeah. good to know. But you would still have the second action uh, from your attack. Second attack from your action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I do that with her? Uh, yeah. Yep. Because you're holding your action, and okay. whatever your action gives you, if you have multiple attack, then that's multiple attack. Okay. Uh, let's just do one of these, then. I'm going to whiff on that one. Uh, ten and change. Yeah. It's kind of screamed and hauled back uh, just as it's getting to hit, and it just skims where that was. Okay. Uh, it almost seems to, to suck up some of the shadow that it's gathered from the body before. Okay. Uh, okay, that's its turn now. So it's kind of in position finally. Uh, and uh, it's going to focus on you because you're immediately in its, in sure. its focus. Um, once again, going to try to do a bite. Uh, that is a 14 to hit. Hit. Okay. Um, for eight points of piercing damage, as it kind of okay. <laughs> launches down and kind of sh shreds a bit of your shoulder, pulling back on it. I'll take eight. Uh, let's see. I'll just roll these at the same time, which is easy. So that is an 18, is the lowest. Well, that will definitely hit. And then a 15 is now the lowest. Uh, that'll hit as well. Okay, so one miss. As a. Uh, because uh, I rolled four times and it didn't uh, actually oh. hit connect all four okay. times. As all four arms kind of in sequence uh, get you. Sure. One of them ends up kind of clanging against the blade itself and it kind of cringes back and holds that arm back. Okay. Um, so that is 11 points of slashing damage for the first one. Okay, so one second. And that's. Got it. 12 points of slashing for the second. Uh, got it. Uh, only six points of slashing damage for the third. Okay. Uh, and then it seeks to rend you. It won't, it won't get the chance just yet. Clark will drop at that point. Okay. It still rends you. That's fine. So that's one death saving. Ow. Unless you're popping back up. Well, I'm going to pop back up. Okay. So we'll do relentless endurance. So Clark will die again. Okay. And then, <laughs> and then it hits you then, for another yeah. another uh, oh. nine points and that sends you back down to the ground. Yeah. Okay. There we yeah. go. Uh, and it kind of <laughs> sends Prime Fund over the body. Uh, that leaves it to the start of the next round. Clark, you're up. Uh, death save. <laughs> uh, seven, so I'm gonna say no. That's a failure. Okay. No. As Clark has gone down, because mm. I'm a. You well. see in front of you your your friend and erstwhile mentor, under the feet of this enormous creature you brought here. Okay. Uh. Well, uh, because it's the first round to come back, I'm assuming we had a sneak round or something? Nope. Okay. Both of you knew the other was there, essentially. Because I have Dread Ambusher, which gives me an extra action in the first round of combat. In the first round of combat? Or yes. Or is that when you have sn uh, snuck? It says for the first round of each combat. It's, it's an ambushy sort of thing. But the thing is, because we're holding attacks yeah, you kind of for, for, for went that. That's oh, well, no, actually, I probably would. It's just plus one attack on the first one, so when I attacked, it would have been a second attack. Um, yeah, okay. I'll let you do that now. Um, if you have anything, you can do at range, because it wasn't close enough. Yep. I'm actually, it would have had to have been against the other one, because this mm -hmm. one wasn't visible. Yep. I'm just going to do the same thing I did the first time. Okay. Uh, and just. There's actually, no, no, there's no loading lo properties. Uh, actually, there is, so I'm going to sling instead. Um, is that one? One it has to be. Or? Yep. Okay. Uh, I should be a dagger. I get two of those. Okay. Now one. We did the same action at the same time. Uh, that's 18, 28, minus 5 is 23. That hits. Hey. Uh, and. Uh, mm. uh, 15 damage. <laughs> As it falls over when the dagger hits it, strikes strike <laughs> right at Zakis's feet. So basically what happened is that's right. It ran in. Well it ran in, a massive spell went off, and then <laughs> Yeah, and it died. <laughs> Thump. And as it died, it gored him to pieces. <laughs> Almost. 
<laughs> um, so that was that so, yeah. was so, that was the previous turn, the previous one. Yeah. Um, first of all, I am going to uh, heal Clark. Okay. Uh, with a uh, healing word. What's the word? The word bird, is bird. bird. Oh bird crap! The word. <laughs> yeah. Six, eight. Uh, ten, one more die. Fourteen. Okay. Uh. Yeah. I can't leave uh, Clark to uh, die here alone. So I'll die so with him. Die with him, yeah. Yep. <laughs> oh, I forgot. That uh, not that matters, but that second attack actually added the eight extra damage. So yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, it's more dead. <laughs> it is. Well, I don't really have much that I can do at this point. Oh, except for that. Hmm. Okay. Time to conjure some animals. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm not stuff. going to go for a lot it. of them. Though. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going. I'm just going for one CR two. Yeah. Uh, what do you need? Where's my CR two? Flavor wise, I love that spell. Practical mm -hmm. wise, it is just the most annoying thing. Because <laughs> hey. it just it it yeah. I'm yeah. only casting one. I know, I know, but it's it's. Rhinoceros. Rhinoceros. Only a rhinoceros. Yeah. Um. I don't think I have one of those. It's large. I mean, if you have like an elephant or anything, that would work too. I only have a uh, a huge, um, but I have. Yeah, that should be fine. Yeah. It's obviously not a rhinoceros, but. Well, that's what happens in the shadow. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. You go for a rhinoceros and you get a. Oh, that's right there. That's <laughs> oh, what is that? <laughs> um. Yeah. Yeah, I that's mean, my action, my bonus action. <laughs> I could try to move away, but instead I'm going to uh, just look terribly small next to the rhinoceros. <laughs> okay. Uh, that was Ironbound. Yep. It is now his turn. Uh, Do something useful, Bard. <laughs> You're a crazy bunch of fools. I kind of like that. Uh, let's see. Uh. Mm. Do you have any healing words? Uh. Me and my 200 hit points. <laughs> I'm happy um. the rhinos got 45. It'll last a turn or so. I took no damage last combat. I've taken 10 damage. Yep. So, like, I have over 200 hit points. Let's see. Yeah, we have a bunch of damage between us. Uh, actually. <laughs> yeah. Um. Hmm. I'm trying to think of a bad joke. Mm -hmm. What's a bad joke involving a troll? I'll let you guys think about it so I don't have to uh, think about uh, it alone. Uh, where'd you leave your bridge, you jerk? It's a very bad joke. Yeah, I don't know. Go back to your bridge. Yeah. <laughs> if a bard can't figure out how to troll somebody, they're not no, a bard. No, GM is having a momentary uh, <laughs> inspiration, and I'm hoping that the group will come up with inspiration for it. No, I'm just like, uh, the bard might want to troll him. Yeah. Yeah. As for bad jokes, I think uh, uh, our handling of the current combat probably qualifies. <laughs> <laughs> It's comedic, if nothing else. Mm-hmm. Um, I plan to die laughing. <laughs> Me too! Let's see. I'll find my way home, don't worry, guys. Oh, good. <laughs> you're in the woods, you're practically home already. Hmm. I'll just marry the gardener, it's fine. Mm. Something about the trolls mm. thinking. Part my fiance, it's <laughs> kind of the same thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I'm just gonna. Uh, I'm gonna yeah, yeah, the I first think. bad joke I can think of, which is, uh, uh, what do you call the worst statue you've ever seen? A trolling stone. So, uh, <laughs> lets out a vicious mockery, which doesn't do a lot of damage, but it has disadvantage just next to it. Uh, 
the range of vicious mockery? Does he have to come uh, in for that? Or? Nope, he does not. Okay. Uh, uh, although it would be, it is an enormous amount of, of space, and his voice does seem to echo around this entire yeah. area. He seems to carry. Mm. Uh, okay. Voices carry. Uh, that's Corrin's turn. No, that, yes, Corrin's turn. Zakas, you're up. Mm-hmm. How bad does that troll look? Um, angry. Okay. Yeah. We haven't done a whole lot to it yet. Clark took a mighty swing, but okay. So as a good. bonus action, I'll uh, wait a that. I'll firebolt the troll. Okay. With an eighteen plus ten. Uh, eighteen is a hit. Oh, let me just check. Something. Yes. 12 damage fire, and as a bonus action, I'll grab some of the blood of the fallen troll and put it into a vial. Nah. It's not a bonus action, that's a full action. Damn it! Mm. <laughs> okay, I'll just firebolt the troll and run away more. <laughs> okay. Uh, Elzera. Um, I will move 60 feet into the fray. <laughs> okay. Uh, 10, 20, 30, 40. The rolling doom of fire coming spo- comes forward. Uh, you can see behind her the ground is not only barren but now singed and blackened. Uh, it's likely that nothing will ever grow there again. Uh, At this point, I'm kind of yay about that. So valid. Uh, that's your move. Um, I am going to taunt it. <laughs> taunt it in primordial. <laughs> Mm. Uh, that's basically all I can do at the moment. Um, I am going to actually. What do I know of trolls? Um, you can make a history check. What the closest we get? Not twenty. Not twenty. Woo! Uh, trolls are very, very dangerous because they do not die uh, unless they are utterly obliterated, usually by fire. Uh, so I will dash onto another 60 feet onto the downed ones. Uh, either you're going to have to move through the thorns, or you're going to have to take... Cause, that cause one, cause the I'm, downed one. Uh, the downed one? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to the downed one. Okay. Uh, because I don't have to attack to light things on fire. I just need to occupy the same space. Okay. Wait, I need some of its blood. Okay. And as the flames burn over it, you see its body starting to wither and blacken. Uh, let's see. Uh, I don't count as creatures, do they? Uh, as an arrow <laughs> zips on sense. by, barely missing the rhino. Form. It's not like and a second arrow zips on by, barely missing the rhino from that direction. Hmm. Sorry, not an arrow. It would be a, a, a thorn spike that gets whipped off in that direction. Um, Under fire! Uh, let's see. That is her turn. Uh, that one so is, the is hopefully uh, yeah. <laughs> Black there we go. Appears. There's the bad joke we needed. Excellent. Glad I can help. And that one is there. Okay. Uh, let's see. Sensing the danger. Hmm. What is it going to do? I think it's going to attack out of fury. So um, with uh, Kazima and uh, Clark right there. And, and the, the rhino. And the rhino. It's going to uh, bite at Clark, first of all. Uh, that is a 17 to bite. Yeah, that'll hit. Uh, for. Actually, uh, I think you probably get advantage. Why? Mm-hmm. I'm prone. He's prone. Oh. Not that it matters. It might be impossible. It, might, it, it might wasn't get a crit. A crit so okay, yeah. Nine points of piercing. Okay. Uh, and then uh, two hits on Kazima. Erg. Um, that's a the lowest one is twenty four. Uh, yep, and there goes the rhino too. Yeah, well. Uh, that's ten points of piercing damage. Yep, I'm out. And seven points of piercing damage, which is two crits failed. Uh, which is one crit failed. Two. Uh, if the target is immobile, uh, immobile, melee attack is not a critical, which is two. Uh, well, you were on your way to falling. That kind of happens after his hits, but mm. um, unfortunately, he's also going to rend. It'll be two. He would have got me too if that was. Uh, yep. So you do have two two death saves uh, 
fails because it does rend as well. As the two, as the two kind of come together, scratch at you, and then pull back its claws out, rending you. Uh, uh, then it doesn't see that anymore. Uh, Clark isn't there. You can hit me again. It'll kill me. Uh, can it cl- <laughs> no, it can, no. Uh, you don't know. You're still up. You could, it still has the hits. You can kill Clark hits. again. <laughs> Reaching down and picking up Clark. That's cool. Uh, um, are you still... He's prone, and he's you're, conscious, you're, you're conscious, but so he's gonna unable be... to act, so I assume he wins anyway. Um, it's why not, is he unable well, to act? Not you're, not you're, awake. you're awake, you're able to act. Yeah, you're not in it. You're just so down. It comes down to a contested act. role at this point. Okay, sure. So you can use athletics or acrobatics. Athletics is cool, to... and I assume it would be a disadvantage? Uh, no, actually. Being prone? No. Okay. Prone doesn't give you a disadvantage in this case. Okay. Um, however, that's a pretty good role. Uh, so total twenty. My twenty-six. Uh, sorry, twenty-three. My twenty-six will beat that. Okay, as its its massive paw kind of grabs into the ground beside you, and you can just kind of see the 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 rock and dirt just torn up where it was. If it had okay. hit you, it it would have given the worst pair I've ever, or the best, depending you look at it. Sure. Uh, um, that said, its movement and kind of seeing the, the the burning embers of the other one, it's going to turn and try to run away. Attack of opportunity? Prone. Uh, you do get attack of opportunity you? with disadvantage. Yeah, Can you I just had disadvantage on it. Yeah, I'll give it a shot. Uh, no. It's not moving out of your range, so it's not attack of opportunity for you. Uh, I will spend a charge on the glaive. Okay. To give an advantage on to hit and damage. Okay. So it'll be a Yeah, because uh, you're at a disadvantage because you're prone. It doesn't actually... It just gives a plus three. It doesn't actually... Oh, right. It's just a bonus. Disadvantage. Oh, that crit would have been nice. And the five. <laughs> uh, okay, so five, eight, uh, 13, 14. Uh, 14 is a hit. Oh, sorry, 14 uh, is not a hit. 14, 15, 16. 16 is a hit. Okay. Just uh, as you kind of now. swing out and the blade snaps straighter to, to extend itself a little bit, okay. and catch it along the back of the leg. I need one of these things. It yells out in pain. Whew. 10. Uh... 14, and, uh, 15, 16, 17, and, and uh, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, for that is necrotic. Okay. Uh, 22, wait, 20, I said 21? 22, 20. <laughs> if I just keep waiting, it'll be like 60 here in a moment. Uh, <laughs> well, the 10 and a 4. Yeah. Uh, Fourteen and four is eighteen. Yeah, I don't think I actually get the bonus damage on the on the necrotic. I assume I don't. Why? It just is attack and damage. Yep. No, it's the bonus on damage as well. Okay, so eighteen, and as the shadow itself kind of reaches out and uh, grasps around his ankle and pierces. 19, 20, 21. 21. Yeah. All right. So, uh, uh, as you, seven you kind of that is necrotic. Swing out desperately from the ground, and the glaive cuts it across, uh, sort of. Uh, diagonally across the back of the leg, and you can see the leg unspooling in in, uh, in the muscles themselves, kind of fighting against uh, the the little remaining tendon that's there. And kind of starting to crawl up its leg. It lets out a howl of anger oh. and pain, and then dives into the uh, the uh, thicket around. Uh, I don't need this guy anymore. That guy's up the Oops. plane. Wrong, wrong thing. There we go. Uh, Clark, you are up. However, uh, let's go up and pursue. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now, oh, yeah. the writhing uh, of these thorns is happening in front of you. It's going to right. be very difficult to move through here. Not a problem. Okay. I, mean, I don't know. It's difficult terrain, it, it, and it is attacking you as you move through. Yeah, it. No, so that's, that's not a problem. We will uh, we'll try to strike it. I don't know how far I can get in, but okay. I'm moving at thirty right now, so I can move fifteen, which would be two squares. Okay. Yep. So it will attack you twice as you move in. Okay. Uh, does a 13 hit? Yeah. Okay. You take uh, six points of piercing okay. damage as you're cut through, as the, as you go through. Clark drops. <laughs> yeah. And one death save as the rest of it kind of go shrunk. Okay. Actually, sorry, you didn't make it that far. You didn't stop on the first one, so don't yeah. worry about yeah. the second one. All right. Uh, but you see Clark just on the edge of this kind of get hung up and almost uh, stop mid-stride as he's kind of being pinioned there by these things. Uh, that's Clark's turn. Uh, Ironbound. Because I'm not. Hmm. 
I succeed on one. Okay. Uh, that is Corin's turn. Corin does have a couple of tricks. Stop him! Uh, he has your ring! Uh, up close and personal, you, neither of you saw a ring. It I'm just going to say that anyway, because mm-hmm. it's... Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. He's trying to get him to do something. Yeah. Uh, he does something, all right. He yeah. whistles a small Teleport. tune. Uh, Uzumaya <laughs> regains uh, 13 points of health as he whistles a small tune that seems to echo throughout the entirety of the space. Told you this was a bad idea. Um, Zakis, you're up. You see Kuzumaya kind of struggling there. You see uh, Do the I sort still of see the hung, hung form. Uh, you can hear it, but you can't see it because the thicket is already Damn closed it. up behind it. I'll fire a level 5 chromatic orb in that general direction. The thing in between you and it right now is Clark. But, I mean, no. Oh. And Clark is like the only thing you can actually see, and then the thicket behind it, as, as before, is, is too thick to see through that far. Again, you can kind of hear it off in the distance. Could not like, shoot through. around Clark uh, if, if it's a disadvantage. I think uh, the problem is is that because my character's unconscious, he can't get out of the way, so he's stuck where he's at. And you can't actually yeah. see it, so you're already firing at disadvantage. Yeah. Although their thing is large. Uh, yeah, I mean, he could just fire at disadvantage at it. Uh, just don't roll a one. Or do. You know you're going to have to fire in Clark's uh-huh. direction. Do roll a one. Yes. Clark will get to find out what's beyond the veil of death. It's true. Great well, Zaxxus is about to die anyway, so... Last Go ditch effort, it. level 5 chromatic orb. Let's do this. There is a 2 and a 6, so that's a... So that's not a 1. That's good. Damn. Not enough to hit. <laughs> Next time, gadget. Next time. 2 plus 11? So 13. Mm-hmm. So 13. 13. Unfortunately, your chromatic orb, what kind of chromatic orb it was, was it? It was fire. Fire? Okay. Kind of burns into, and you can see it kind of lighting on the uh, the uh, br- the broken br- branches and trees that it was there, and kind of burning those up. And you actually see that the rest of it kind of moves out of the way, but it does not seem to penetrate very far. Damn it. Uh, Elzara. I can move into an inch of space. You can. You also see that Clark is bleeding out right now on the edge of the forest. Yes, but I see that he's up. It's true. Um, and I know he has a potion of healing because I gave him two. I don't know who used the other one. <laughs> um, you have all the others, all know. the other things. Yeah. Um, but I want that thing dead. Okay. So, so you're going to pursue mm-hmm. it? I'm going to pursue it. Uh, with 60 feet of movement and okay. being fire with a very good perception and... So as you move through it, it will be attacking you. Yep. Um, you are burning away at it. Five, six. Uh, oh, yeah, that nat 20 would have been nice, but it was a 23 to hit. Yeah. Yeah, she'd get about 20 feet into the... For yeah. five points of piercing damage. And then Non-magical? A, uh, actually, in, yeah, in this case, hmm, what are these things? I would say it's magical because they're not actually uh, normal creatures or normal plants. Cool. So it's only four points. Um, uh, does a uh, 18 hit? Yep. Okay. For an additional three points of piercing. But you are clearing away, and you can kind of see that it's it's receding a little bit from you. Uh, but what it's doing is kind of throwing throwing a branch with some with some thorns at you that kind of withers away. Um, it's not getting out of your way, your way, but it's it's uh, it's hampering you a little bit. Um, and does my immunity to being grappled, paralyzed, restrained? And all that mm-hmm. have any it's, effect? It's not able to actually grapple you. That's why yeah. I didn't bother rolling the things yeah. after I realized. But, but no, does this, this affect the the difficult terrain? That I'm just. It's not difficult terrain. It's just that as you move forward, it makes so many attacks per per distance. Okay. Uh, but so. it's actually for you. It's even less than difficult terrain, is it is trying to actively move out of your way. Cool. Um, I'm going to um, get as far as I need to get to get to to that thing. Okay. Uh, make I a have... perception check. I don't think it's really going to matter because your perception is ridiculous. But. Uh, it's a natural 17 plus 8. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can easily find where it crashed through, essentially. Um, seemingly not even caring about the, the things around it, so you pick up its trail pretty quickly. I want to give it a um, hug. How, what's your <laughs> speed? 60. Okay. Yeah, she moves right next to uh, right You and actually... 
I can dash. Running. Yep, you can catch up to it. Yeah. Uh, as it's kind of running through desperately. Um, so I'm going to make a two. Uh, uh, if you dash, that's your action, though. Yeah, fair. Yeah. So you've caught up to it, but you haven't quite engulfed it yet. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I've just caught up. I'm not in its space. That's to, right. Okay. I guess. Because it started a little bit before you as well, so it had a little bit of extra distance on you, but not much. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, and... Oh, no, those were actually... No, never mind. That's all. Okay. Uh, it is Radix's turn. Um, Radix emerges from... Actually, from right there. Where's the uh, candle? So right by the candle. Hmm. Here. She emerges, just kind of literally walking out of the thorns themselves, uh, which do sort of thrash behind her, but she doesn't seem to notice as she sees that... Uh, well, actually, no, she'd emerge right beside where you are, because she knows where you are. Uh, Come one with the bushes as well. Mm -hmm. I do not have anything there. She is going to try... Yeah, she's going to try to pull you out of the thorns. All right. This is not her forte landing stretch. Uh, ooh, that is awful. Uh, she kind of grips onto you, and she's like, she literally can't move. Lose a move finger. Uh, she pr she basically pulls on you and kind of lifts herself off her feet, trying to do so. Um, let's see. Uh, and you all notice as the the thorns are starting to grow over the edge of where the clearing had been. Uh, seems like the spell that Corin had put up was the only thing keeping them at bay. Uh, let's see, that makes it its turn. Yeah, it's desperate at this point, so it's just going to run away. You do get an attack of opportunity. That's a natural 18 plus 6. Yep, as you leave your fiery trail across his back, um, how dangerous is this? Very cool. It's actually not that... Oh. It's just going to catch fire, but, um, that is seven, eight, make nine, ten. catch fire or anything catch fire? Any creature that I touch. Okay. <laughs> um, so that's Stop. ten fire damage. Okay. Uh, and I'm just going to double check. Uh, a creature uh, that touches the elemental or hits it with a melee attack. So I am touching it by hitting it. Yeah, it's, it's usually meant to be the other way when it does it on its turn, but I'll, I'll allow it. Yeah. Uh, the first time a creature, uh, yeah, uh, it takes uh, 1d10 fire damage until it takes an action to... Okay. Uh, that is El that was a its reaction. turn. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a reaction to moving away. Um, having kind of been stopped in its movement, it's going to turn and desperately try to attack. It may or may not work. It's probably going to hurt it a little more than it hurts you. AC 13. Uh, <laughs> best fire. Because I didn't actually uh, so <laughs> put the bite, up my So the bite hits, and you can hear it kind of grimacing as it does. Uh, as Why did it, I uh, bite? Fire! Yeah, it's it's kind of Spicy uh, food. desperate at this point. You will eat anything, right? Uh, that's uh, seven points of piercing damage. Is it magical or not? It would be considered magical. Cool. Uh, Biting jalapenos. Now it's going to try with the claws. Cool. See if it can do more damage to you than you do to it. Uh, so that's a 14 for the lowest, and a 14 is the lowest. Yeah. Okay. So you're going to be rolling 4d10 for the fire damage it's taking from doing all of this. This is going to be interesting because it could end up killing itself trying to do this, but... Okay, do you want me to roll um, them individually to see what hits and what doesn't? Uh, no. No, it won't matter until the end of the turn. We'll just do it all at once as it's all simultaneous. It basically goes okay. with everything at once, and it's burning all at once. Uh, just to make it easier. Well, it's more if I kill it with fire, it means I don't get hit, right? Uh, no, it's simultaneously hitting you and burning at the same time. But if, say, the first three attacks killed it, they're all fire simultaneous. Them. All the hits yeah. are simultaneous. Sure. That's not how the, the system works, but okay. Uh, 25 damage. Okay. It didn't die anyway, so. Yeah. Awfully close. Uh, so you take 10 points of slashing damage. Uh, 13 points of slashing damage. Okay. 11 points of slashing damage. Uh, 12 points of slashing damage. And once again, uh, it 
pulls and kind of rends back outward, doing additional damage as does so, for an additional six points of slashing damage. But it is currently on fire and not looking happy about it. <laughs> uh, that's its turn. Uh, if fire could be bloodied, fire is bloodied right now. But <laughs> Clark. Uh, death save, I think. I believe so. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Three. Be a failure. That's a failure. Uh, as the as the growth around you slowly starts to encompass your body, uh, piercing now without any without any. Well, actually, it's not piercing because you're not restricted. That, that's okay. I'm unconscious. Uh, not. Uh, well, if it was actively attacking you, it would be death saves. That's fine. But it's not bothering you because you're not moving. Uh, sorry. Uh, Kuzima. Hmm. Okay. Well, uh, I stand up. We go to Clark. Bonus action to pop the head off a doll and pour the pour, the potion in. It's uh, so you're stepping into the the uh, the thorny forest, the thicket. Sure. Okay. So we'll make an attack at you as you step into it. Yep. Uh, that is a sixteen. Yep. So you take five points of piercing damage as you step in. Uh, I think. No. Yeah, you're right. Feeding someone a, uh, is a bonus, or is a regular, not a yeah, bonus. Yeah, unless you had rated, you rated it before, and then it would be a bonus action. But you're doing it all at once. Hmm. Sure. So um, roll the health. As for the fifth time today, you you get edge five. <laughs> you're alive. Each time you're feeling a bit of a headache. Oh well, yeah, uh, sure. I would imagine all sorts of things. Uh -huh. As the the blackness around you kind of returns <laughs> to semi semi light. Uh, uh, so that was an action. You have a bonus <coughs> an additional move. Let's see. I will uh, wait until he tries to free himself so I can help. Okay. I'd like to ask No, him. I can't. That'd so be I'd, an action. Yeah. No, I'll just... Uh, Radix is right there trying to help already, uh -huh. so that would help I him. will bonus action healing word uh, him and then step back out of the area. That's another 11. All right. And then I move back out. Okay. Um, Corrin from atop the stone. Well, let's hope this works again. And he begins to play a tune. It's a familiar tune to kind of similar to what he had done the first time you had met. Uh, as he plays this tune, there is a shimmer of light that forms around him. And the shimmer passes over the stone. The stone seems to take on a bit of a surreal quality. And you can kind of see that uh, where uh, whatever effect he had before had been removed, the stone was kind of marred and not perfectly round, but now smoothed out once again. And you see flowing out from the bottom of the ground once again, popping up, growing instantaneously, are these tiny little shoots of clover that spread out in a circle around the stone. And they push out towards the edge. And where the edge had pushed uh, beyond uh, the original circle, there is a contest going on. This will be interesting. So that's him. Not bad. That's them. Worse. As you see the, the clover kind of pushing back and the vines kind of shifting back, they're trying to pull you in with you. You can resist. You will have advantage because Radix is holding on to you. Okay. As the edge of the thicket moves backward, forced back by the force of clover. Sure. I'll resist. All right, and you have advantage because of uh, Radix. Uh, what's the what's the uh, skill? Athletics. Uh, this would be athletics or acrobatics, your okay. choice. Uh, twenty six. <laughs> yeah, as you kind of feel yourself being released by it, you kind of pull back with Radix's help, kind of leaning on her and almost falling on top of her in her direction. You pull back out, landing uh, softly on the on the the uh, the uh, clover beneath you. Cool as it gets pushed back once again. And again, the, the clover kind of takes light uh, and the whole area gets a certain level of, of, of freshness that was vanishing a moment ago. Even the air smells fresh and you can feel again that sort of summer breeze moving through. Beyond fricasseed troll? Uh, it's already starting to dissolve. Interesting. And uh, actually, fire. sorry, it's not starting to dissolve. It's starting to 
uh, well, the fire went out fairly quickly, actually, as all of the burnable material went away, and now it's nothing but ash, as you see it starts to fall apart. Uh, it does not dissolve like the other creatures did. Okay. Uh, that was Clark Kuzima. Oh, sorry, that was a reaction to the thing happening. Yep. Yeah, that was no, turn. Uh, That means it is Zacchaeus' turn. Do I see the troll in the woods? Uh, at this point, uh, at this point, what you see is a bright firelight, but you do not see the troll because the firelight is kind of covering it at the moment. It's in that direction. You're fairly certain. And the pathway that she had gone through is starting to to, to, to tighten up behind her as it regrows. Can I uh, discriminate between the Elzara fire versus the troll fire? At this distance, it's going to be a perception check at this advantage. I'll go a little closer. Okay. Is the perception check any easier now? It's going to be a disadvantage, but the DC will be lowered. Okay. Perception check. It's Which one is a, it? It's going to be a 13. So there's a 9 and a 2, so that's probably not... Okay. Unfortunately, it's really hard to tell, because literally there are two burning features right there. Uh, the brighter one is probably Elzera, but the other one's lit up pretty well, too. Uh, I'll shoot the less bright one with a chromatic orb, level 4. Okay, disadvantage on the roll. Yep. Don't roll a 1. There's an 8 and a 9. What what kind of uh, magic? Fire. Okay. Uh, 8 and a 9, so what's the total? Plus 11. Mm -hmm. So 19. Okay. So 18. So 19. Hit 19. Fire! How many dice are you rolling? Six. So it's because it's level four. Okay. Ten. Man, these numbers are shitty. Mm. So that's only 20 fire damage. So describe how the troll dies. You stole my kill. <laughs> <laughs> this small bolt of fire er, goes and goes and goes, pierces through its rib cage, and in the middle, kind of like spreads. Okay. One arm falls off, the other one falls off. It's just standing there for a little bit, not knowing what to do, as his life like exits its body, and it just kind of like dies there, frozen, waiting for something made of fire to smash it out of spite. <laughs> well, as you look in and are ready to smash it, you see another fire come almost through you, right at the nimbus, the edge of your, your form. You don't think you did that? Um, but a, a ball of fire comes and ignites within it, uh, kind of yeah, rupturing its, its rib cage. Uh, one of the arms gets kind of blown off and it looks in, incredulous at that. Uh, another arm is on fire already and kind of burning away to ash as you watch. And then in a second it is consumed. Uh, and then it kind of collapses into a pile in front of you. <laughs> and it is dead. Is there Find any the ring! Um, you're going to dig through the ashes? Hopefully the ring didn't melt. What was all that Shh. intense flame? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm going to grab because bone does not burn. <laughs> Normally, yes, but this is turned to ash. Okay. Um. But you said that one arm kind of flew off. Yep. So, so you can I'm find that one. It is burning away yeah. at the moment. It's starting yeah. to ash up, and as you look, there is no ring upon its finger. Yeah. And I'm going to grab that arm and poke through the the flames. Um. Well, as you grab that arm, it literally is like disintegrating yeah. as yep. you try to poke through. Uh, becoming almost indistinguishable from a pile of ashes that you're digging through. Make an investigation check. Uh, 17. 17. Yeah. As you kind of push through the ashes, you actually notice the ashes themselves are kind of floating away. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the ground around is starting to get singed. There is no ring. Okay. There is uh, nothing, in fact. They don't care much. Cool. Uh, I'm going to go back. Uh, I'm also going to heal myself a okay. six hit points. Uh, they are attempting to attack you along the way. They seem to be very timid about it, however, and not making very much for strikes. Uh, as once again, the the uh, the forest around you, although cowed a bit by the flame, still willing to, to attempt to attack you, but not doing so very successfully. Um, as you reach the edge of it, you see once again the green uh, the green field in front of you. I'll go into it. Okay. Um, the ring. Did you find it? No. You see the the uh, the uh, edge of the uh, the grassy field uh, burning away as she walks around through it, regenerating pretty much instantly as she steps through, um, but slowly. I should say instantly and slowly at the same time. <laughs> I, I I wouldn't go far. I'd just be in the circle. 
Right. So, um, is anybody down at this point? I'm, I've lost track personally as GM. Just yep. want to make sure everybody is either conscious. Okay. Uh, then Corn will not do anything more. I'm at eight, but still alive. Hmm. In, in primordial, that there's no rain. Did you get it? I'll go over and check the other pile of ash. Yeah, I'll go check the other pile of ash too. If Elsara says the first. Make pile an investigation of ash. check, both of you. Does it look like there's a towering inferno heading towards us? There is a towering inferno that's walked into the clearing. Does it look familiar? Uh, it seems to be non non aggressive, okay. at least to you. Uh, Seventeen investigation. Okay, and for uh, Kazima, uh, twenty one. Twenty one. Uh, you find one of its bones that is disintegrating to ash as you watch. But other than that, no trinkets, nothing. Apparently, whatever treasure they have, they don't carry with them. Mm. No ring. We did all this for nothing? But you didn't get it. Ah, blast. Well, so for our efforts, can I still be compensated as in not dying? I still need the ring. I can't do anything without it. Well, what? I can do a few things without it, but I can't do that. <sighs> Where do they keep their belongings normally? I presume wherever they were held up. How far away was that? Half a mile. That's... With fire, could we make it there easily? Not right now. I'm barely standing. <laughs> oh, now Clark will get up. <laughs> Bruised, cut, oh, yeah. burned. Looks terrible. Corin, I saw you uh, revive some of our compatriots. Anything, any chance you could do something for us? I could do a few things, yes, but if we not get, everything. If we can get to where they were holed up, we could find where the treasure was, which would be... Who, who knows? All right. I can help you a bit. Give me a minute. And he sits down. Um, from the bardic training you've received, you kind of understand the sorts of things he's doing. It's strange, because these spells seem somewhat distorted in this space. Uh, his reach is tremendous, at least from the distance you can see. Uh, he begins a melody, uh, one that doesn't sound entirely unfamiliar to you, actually. It's a familiar uh, song, but stronger somehow. Um, he, he, uh, he pauses, kind of letting the sound of the silence reverberate off of the, the surrounding thicket, um, which kind of comes back to him, and he kind of times it a bit. This could take a minute or two. I haven't done this for a long time. And he begins to play once more. And this time he's playing against his own echo, letting it feed back into him and kind of counterpointing himself at this particular point. Almost like he's doing a, he's a looper, doing loops with himself throughout the woods. At some point, you almost get the impression that there are two sounds that he's emanating at the same time. Uh, and hopefully... Uh, uh, Your heads explode. No. Yay! Boom. Everybody heals 15 hit points. Woo. Uh, right away. He seems to be maintaining the spell, but you can see it's doing some effort, and you can actually see the edges of the space around him starting to shrink a little bit, as if he's not able to maintain that as strongly when he's doing something else. Do we want to take a short break and then go, or do we want to go now? He has hours, and it's an hour walk. Mm. Um... I think. Yeah, I don't have anything really for speeding that up. Well, it's only half a mile. It shouldn't take us long, if we, especially if we can burn the forest as we go along. I'm presuming that you're actually translating for Elzara's crackles yeah. and, and burns. <laughs> I suppose if we're sneaking there, they're slow. Yeah. With fire, it um, can be done more easily, I suppose. We just have to stay close to her without being burnt at the same time. Mm. I might be able to guide you a bit, now that those things are gone. You can see Radix looks almost pale uh, in comparison, a little bit sheepish as well. Your efforts are much appreciated. Whatever help you can provide, we'll take it. I might be able to speed it up a bit as long as as long as there's no more of them out there. Were there any more? Not that I saw. You only saw the two, and there's right. the two at that space. Well, let's go. I'll take his word for it. I'll crack my knuckles and use another first level spell. Okay. Just... To heal myself. The sound of wood cracking, really, what I imagined yeah. at that point. So You said he was maintaining the spell? He is maintaining the spell, yeah. So, so how long are you going to wait before you leave? As the energy seems to... The warmth of the wind seems to whip a little stronger. You see, well, if we wait a minute, does it do anything? 
If not, then we should probably just head out. Are you going to wait a minute? Yeah. Okay. Additional 18 hit points, and then he has to stop the spell. I hope that helps. Mm. Those things... Well, I've never seen them die like that before. I've been present when one died. That wizard was pretty good at those things. So we should go. Yes. Clark reaches into his purse. All right. He pulls out a single shiny silver coin. Okay. And hands it to the... Uh, Drew, not Druid. Corn? Corn? Or no. you mean her? Her. Okay. And offers it. So right. she takes it. She, he's holding out a silver coin to you. Not to no. you. No. Oh, dryad. To the dryad. Oh, the dryad. I was trying to figure the D word and I was like, oh, that's the wrong one. Yeah. Radix. Yes. Yeah. The um, dryad. Radix looks confused and takes the coin from you. Yeah. What's this for? The attempt. Thank you. She kind of looks at it oddly. What's it for? I'll leave that to you. Okay, thank you. And she kind of leans in and gives you a hug at that point. No, oh, that yeah, is yeah, I hope you're not dead. Or one of these coins. Uh, no, it's like an actual silver coin. Actual okay. silver coin. Yeah. Uh, and she kind of tucks it away somewhere. I will follow Elzera in her trail of fire. Okay, so how are we doing this? Radix is offering to lead, but there's obviously more things that she needs to tackle if she's in the lead. If the fire is in the lead, it will open up a pathway, as you know, but the pathway doesn't last long. And it's noisy. It is noisy. It's going to be noisy anyways, unless she changes back, and mm-hmm. we should probably okay. keep her in fire form yep. right now. We're going to keep you in fire form. I mean, Hope you don't mind. I, tell you, I, mean, yeah. I mean, I have an extra 91 hit points out of it, so mm-hmm. like... I mean, we can't sneak anyways, so we might as well not do this slow and careful. Let's just pass without a trace drop. By the way, that's why I rolled one to d twenty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, we might as well just go as fast as we can and follow Elzera. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah. The yeah. dryad yeah. can always say, "No, turn left." Turn so, right. what I'm assuming the way that Radix is being used in this condition is she's not using it for the stealth, but she's using it for her ability to walk around these things and know where they are and, and, well, yeah, and avoid danger. the dangerous yeah. ones. Yeah. Navigation. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'll give her a roll. No, so, in this case, I'm but. basically being used as a plow. You're a torch. Uh-huh. You're the torch boy. Uh, okay. You proceed along the way. Um, I'm more like flamethrower girl, but... Uh. Elzera, part of the woods. I feel bad, but also not because these woods are creepy. Yeah, they're, they're not real woods. <laughs> as expected, making making good time because uh, Radix is in, is in full flight mode. You're actually having a little bit of difficulty keep, keeping up. I'm uh, dashing to keep up. Uh, because the spell that you cast, Longstrider, is that a concentration spell? Nope. nope. Okay. Well, then you actually can keep up pretty well. Hour long non concentration. Uh, good enough. Um, and you make your way very, very quickly. Along the way, um, you do see numerous things similar to what I described happening to him, but they seem to be less effective because the flame is there uh, holding uh, up. You do all have to keep fairly close to it, uh, and it is quite difficult to see anything out there because there's such a bright light right in your face. Um, But Radix tries to keep in front of you slightly, uh, just to kind of navigate a little bit. With you behind her, she can see properly. With you in front of her, she could not see a thing. Uh, but it takes you a better part of a half an hour to make your way there, even at sprinting speeds. Uh, but you do find the uh, essentially the cave where um, you had heard them before. You kind of know the know the direction, uh, but it does take a bit of a winding route to get there. Mm-hmm. Um, you see the open maw of a cave, kind of not so much made in stone, so much as a mound of earth, and it's there before you. It seems to be a fairly large opening. You're there. I go... Mm -hmm. We should go in. But do you want me to specifically go in first? I'll light Um, things up. I can go in. Not going to see me. Do you think there would be any traps? I might see the traps. All right. uh, To be honest, I think they were too dumb for traps. Uh, we'd probably see the uh, water bucket over the cave entrance if they did try. That would be funny. Puts out the fire elemental. How's that even? Well, I mean, it would. It would. I mean, take... Grey Crotter probably might do that. Actually. It would take <laughs> ninety-one gallons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Grey> Brook. <laughs> mm. 
then we've got an illithid fire beastie. Things go badly with that one. Yeah. Uh, so, is uh, Kuzaima yeah. um, sneaking in I'll, there? Yeah, I'll go scout out. Okay. Hey, make it quick. Um, sure. From within the cave, um, you see many things. Uh, piles of discarded clothing. Uh, there are broken weapons. Uh, many of them are bent or even broken right off. Uh, you see uh, small sacks that contain uh, looks like different woven things. Uh, they making clothing or something was making clothing. Uh, after a moment, it, it's pretty obvious to see these are the discarded clothing of anybody who'd come through there that they caught before. Mm. Uh, and it's a fairly uh, large mound, but it's as you kind of dig into it, you notice it's rotting at the bottom. It's been here for a long, long time. Um, you dig through the the piles. And until you come to uh, a kind of a loose stone in in the back of the cave, um, despite your feeling about them, they at least hid whatever treasure they seem to have. Mm -hmm. um, and you pull back the little stone, and from within uh, fall uh, numerous of the uh, the soul stones. Um, oh, the coins. The coins. Okay. So the equivalent of uh, where's my little thing there. Uh, equivalent of uh, 50 shadow coin, so the full-on big coins. Um, there are uh, two small silver daggers um, and a bunch of jewelry. Um, necklaces, rings of a wide variety and sort. It seems to be a decent, uh, decent uh, material. Um, you can figure probably about, uh, if you were to take it back, about 800 gold worth, actually. Quite a pile. Hmm. Um, I will pl set aside any rings, and then once I get out into light where we can actually see color, we can check for that. Okay, there's not much light in the festering itself, yep. but in the light of her flames, you could probably make it out. Yeah, or just anything that's not absolute darkness where my dark vision won't let me see color. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, I'm guessing you bring... All of it, mm -hmm. not just the rings. Um, yeah, I, I leave the rest inside. I mean, <laughs> it will take you a couple of trips <laughs> in order to bring that much stuff out. Uh, well, I'm just going to. Uh, I put the daggers in my belt. Okay. Uh, I'll grab the jewelry in a sack. And what was the other thing? The shadow, shadow coins. Oh, the coins. And two small um, silver daggers. The coins can go in a sack too. Okay. Um, so Gazanda comes out with uh, sort of laden a little bit with these extra sacks. Whoosh, whoosh, Kind of finds those things. I like this sound. Mm. Found stuff. Uh, there's jewelry in there. Here's the rings. Yes. There's about any of eight rings there. Yeah, uh, three of them match the vague description he gave before. Okay. Good. I'll just set those aside, and yeah, we got uh, about 800 gold worth of jewelry if we manage to take it to some place that has real money. <laughs> also, psh, this is full of shadow coins. And there are various denominations as well. Um, 50 total coins worth, but a lot of them are broken up in smaller coins. Yeah. Excellent. And that's all there was? And these two silver daggers. If you don't mind, I'm going to keep them. It's yours. Uh, Clark takes a moment. Is there like a, a stone or something nearby? Yeah. Like There's that. some loose stones here. Football sized. Yeah. Okay, Makes so he'll find one of his stones. He'll pull out one of his own shadow coins. Okay. And set it on the stone. And smack it with a glave. Okay. Just to Ooh. see what happens. So yeah. you put the stone on the, on the glaive. Yeah. There's a blast of darkness that radiates about 50 feet in all directions. All of you see it. Even your flames can't penetrate this for a second. And then it disappears. You now have an additional charge. I have a hunch that that's a thing. The what huh. just happened? A little and experiment. the blade itself is giving off a, a nimbus of shadow now. Uh, Do I count, by the way? Yes. No. Oh. For that thing. Not this time. Okay, fair enough. It's already made its claim. Yeah, mm. I hear that. Uh, you can feed it money? No, Clark you can smiles. feed it souls. Clark smiles. Mm. You well, I'm more. glad you didn't use that to lop off my arm. You want more coins? Uh, we, we should head back. Uh, I can feel itchiness. Where do I feel itchiness now? Uh, actually, as as he's kind of like, at least you can use that to rop off my arm, and you can see a tiny little uh, vein of, of black around his neck. And you kind of reach back, and everybody notices your hands are gray. 
and almost featureless now. The skin shall, is smooth. Should we out. go back right now, immediately? Please. There. You, you lead. It's dangerous. If you gotta go back, yeah, sure. You could uh, maybe hang out and have a nap. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's go. <laughs> So you turn around and make your way back? Yeah, I'll follow Elzara because she's... I like, kind of want to know if any of these are magical. Mm. Does Zacchaeus uh, convey that information, or is he more concerned? I can with... find out when we're back. I don't want I'll him. Cast, well, I don't trust Buddy. Yeah, I'll cast it now. Either, but I, I'd also like okay. to... Yeah, I just cast it. Uh, it's a one yeah. action. One of those rings that match the description is indeed magical. What kind uh, of magic? Transmutation magic. Hmm. Yeah. This one's magical. It's the only one. Some kind of transmutation magic. Okay. Other than that, I don't know. Could be Ring of Healing or something. If it can know. transmute this into not inside me, I would be eternally grateful. He did agree. Mm. What? Slip it on one of his fingers. Does anything happen? I'm already into it. Um, things. There, there could be consequences. Yes. Yeah. His hand flexes holding onto it. Mm. Hmm. You didn't do that. No, I didn't. But did your hand you, is now gripping onto the ring. Did you do that? No, take it away. <laughs> Strength challenge. Yeah. I don't, can I, oh, is, fuck, is, really? Uh, I got an 18. Can it be athletics? Um, I'm grappling. Yeah, what uh, what athletics or acrobatics bonus do you have? Like, Actually, it'd be athletics in this case, we're doing strength, so. Zero. Zero, okay, so an 18 stands. I got a 13. Yeah, his his hand is locked in this in this uh, this grip, and you can even see the knuckles are slightly slightly white. Uh, I'm not and trying it to. Seems do to be this. a death grip. Come on, go on. What one, one of you big people needs to help me? Clark reaches for Lucille and then offers to help. <laughs> no, <laughs> just, just use your hand. I'm just, I'm oh just my like... god, natural twenty. You're I guess that means you succeed regardless of what I roll. Mm, not on skill checks. Not necessarily. Checks. No. Uh, skill no, checks, you need the total. I'll switch I got it back to the other I got a 25. Here. Okay, I got a 20. Okay. All right. Uh, so, yes, uh, his hand seems to grip tightly on it. Mm-hmm. Um, what's your strength bonus? Uh, three, currently. Okay. You take three points of uh, bludgeoning damage. You kind of literally have to break your hand open <laughs> to, get the, get to get at it and kind of eject the ring. Ow, be careful! Oh. No, your hand was feeling numb before you probably don't feel anything. But it still feels you like... Actually I can feel see my fingers <laughs> bent you, backwards. You don't actually... How can this not hurt? You don't feel... You, you instinctively go ow, but you don't actually feel anything. But you can see the finger is definitely bent at the wrong angle. <laughs> I'll feel this later. Clark, Clark, Clark. <laughs> that is nothing. <laughs> Boogie, <laughs> Boogie, he, has the ring. he has the ring. He holds the ring up. Yeah. Right. Be careful with it. Hold on to it with your dear life, and mm. let, let, let's go back to Buddy before this hey, reaches Iron like Man. here. Hmm? He flings a ring at you. <laughs> catch. Yeah, I go catch. He goes whoop whoop whoop. <laughs> Do I try to catch it? No, I was I was more thinking no. ah flick the ring whoop whoop. <laughs> oh, it's gone. No. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a perfect sleight of hand motion to just sort of. Do I sleight of hand it? No. Is my hand uh, possessed or no? I'm assuming that they moved a little bit away yeah. from you for that, yeah. but your hand does kind of creepily. Uh, it is broken anyway, so I guess I couldn't grab. <laughs> it would have had an 11. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you have the, the ring in hand. Are you just heading right back? Yep. Okay. I'm like <laughs> urging Elzera to go on. And Similar to before, the, f- the uh, woods is a little more bold this time. Uh, let's see. Uh, one, two, three, four. Oh, I need five. Uh, it is attacking Zacchaeus. Oh no! <laughs> for a seventeen. Yeah, that's, that's it. it. Uh, two points of piercing damage as one of the vines just sort of whips out and uh, and stabs into your shoulder. <coughs> Hurry! Uh, the second time it attacks, because I rolled really well. Uh, nope, that's a d6. Already four. This is Elzera. No effect because it doesn't actually close enough to you. Uh, and the third time, uh, Zacchaeus again. Oh my god. This isn't uh, 15. Yep. Okay, oops. Uh, additional six points of piercing. Mm. As one of them kind of catches you right across the forehead and nah, cra- uh, stretches across, there's blood pouring down your forehead, at least from the left hand side. The other side does not appear to be bleeding. The corrupted side? Kind yeah. Of? Okay. Yeah. 
as you all see the weird wound tear across his forehead and this part just seems to be spreading a little bit but not actually bleeding until it gets to what here um, and what are you guys looking at make a perception check all of you sure not you need to move fast Don't not me. you oh, fuck i had a 20. you do that way too often tonight that's kind of crazy this dice is like that's fucking kind of, on fire kind of weird. 18. 18? 21. 18 21 okay all three of you notice as the left eye does not move entirely in sync with the right eye you need to move faster. I'm trying. The forest is in my way. I am going to go behind Zacchaeus and like <laughs> ready for the and, other well, finger of death. Like, well, we do need you in front to open the way. I'm not going there <laughs> by myself. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, with you behind yeah. him, it does become more difficult to travel. So you, yeah. you kind of have to be more up front. Yeah. Yes. Um, but it takes you about a half an hour, maybe a little bit less, because you're probably a little more freaked out, I suspect, traveling quickly back mm -hmm. uh, with those couple of attacks along the way. But then you crest the edge of this once more, and once more step into the warm summer breeze that seems to permeate this particular place. All right, ring. Who has the ring? Who has the ring? Give it to the good hand. Did you find it? Nope. Yes. Oh, yes. good. He has it. Ah, I'll take that. Then. Do the thing. First, you must assist him. I told you. I need the ring to do that. That's why I need it in the first place. I'm all. going to stand behind him. So you're going to circle well, around? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. While the ring is being passed. Do I? Uh, I want to insight check this dude. Sure. Yeah, I, I would, would like to as well. I got shit. <laughs> I, I, I would like to as well because sure. I don't trust this dude. He's the only chance. Um, mm -hmm. I rolled yeah, shit okay, as so. well, but okay. my shit is a nine. Sure. <laughs> nine? Okay. Eleven, so. Okay, I give him the ring anyway. Seems sincere. 16? Yep. Yeah. All right, do your thing, quickly. All right. Um, he kind of reaches out towards you, and a shadowy hand goes and picks the ring up from you. You would recognize most of you mm -hmm. as mage hand. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and he pulls the ring back on. Ah, that little beauty. It's been 150 years or so. Let me see. Which finger? And you look up, and he's kind of holding his hand up now, and you can see he's got several rings on his hands. Years. You, you can calculate uh, time in, in this in this realm. Oh, I can do quite a bit, lad. Oh. He puts the finger, finger the thing on his finger. Oof, gone. <laughs> How do you have any actual rings on the same hand? That feels much better. Yes. I feel so much more myself as his voice mm -hmm. deepens, and he stands up, and you see um, a an elf, about seven feet tall. Uh, green in skin, his hair is green as well, but structurally he looks like an elf. That feels so much better. I hate being restricted here. If I ever see that damn wizard again, I'm going to give him what for. Uh, which wizard? Uh, what was his name? Amaki or something, I think. Mm -hmm. Never heard of him. Hmm. Make a deception check, because you definitely know who he's referring to. I twitch. Clark arms That's himself. That's a four. Four? Yeah. Ah, you know him then. I should have figured as much. He probably sent you. Well, I'm keeping his treasure no more. You can have it. And he mm -hmm. proceeds to hop off we the stone. We care not about the treasure. I just want my mind again. Oh, you right. You said, you that know, knows. the deal we made? Sure, You'd remove sure. the parasite or whatever this is? Oh, you are ready. It's going to be pretty nasty when it's free. Yes? Glad he arms himself. Yep. I'm standing behind him still, ready to hit him if anything happens. This is going to hurt. Well, it's better <laughs> than dying. So he walks up to you with the hand with the, the ring on it. On three, then? Yep. One, two, two and the sun hits you before the three. <laughs> uh, hits you on the side of the head. It does do uh, five points of bludgeoning damage. Uh, as That's you literally sad. see him move his head to the side, and something remains. He grabs it very tightly and then just flings it. Uh, you feel this entire uh, side of your body just go weirdly numb, uh, as if all the nerves have been severed at once. From this, he pulls this strange squid-like being. Uh, it has at its very center a blackened brain, uh, attached to which are several different tentacles. He throws it down amongst you, and you're all ready, so what are you going to do? I throw a silver dagger to pin it to the ground. Go ahead and make your throw. Uh, we're all standing around? You're all standing around. Okay, then I got allies You definitely it. do. That's, uh, I'm going to go for the extra damage, really. If it, well, you're um, trying to pin it to the ground. That was your effect you were going for. No, I'm doing damage. Okay. But, okay, I suppose, yeah, if you want to have it for that, yeah. Uh, well, if this is the first round of combat, I could do it. Two attacks. <laughs> sure. So, so I'll, I get a 23 to pin it. Yep. The silver the silver dagger goes through and pierces it. It kind of lifts up this weird sort of... <laughs> Ring's kind of scrambling there. But it is pinned in place. Uh, everybody has advantage now to hit it because it can't move. Beautiful. 
And then, okay, I don't, I get to ignore the one. Uh, I get a 17 to hit. That definitely hits. For, uh, does the silver have any extra effect on it? Uh, it does, but just tell me what the damage is. Uh, sorry. Uh, 19. Oh, okay. wait a minute. 21. Okay. Uh, as you see the dagger kind of whip through, are you stabbing it or throwing the second dagger? I'm throwing the second dagger, okay. too. So you whip the second dagger at it. It's now kind of pinned in two different places. You can see uh, where it kind of hit, uh, kind of around the joint of where one of those tentacles was. The tentacle kind of goes, just fades away. Uh, and it kind of thrashes after that. It looks, uh, uh, there's a, a gray ooze that's coming out the side of the brain. Who's next? Uh, I rolled a 20... Math. Twenty uh, math. Well, that's plenty enough. Tw- <laughs> yeah. Plenty enough. That's like that's like twenty math. Okay. Uh, and you're doing what? The fire. Just do a big fire belly flop on uh, it. Yep. Uh, <laughs> that will make it harder for everyone else, though. So, uh, that actually that was one attack. Uh, it's a held action, so it would I would get two. Um, that is six nine fire damage. Okay. And then. Uh, nine plus six, so fifteen. Fifteen total. Yeah. Uh, as the the flame kind of burns over, and you see the outer edges of it, the kind of grayness kind of burning away. Now it's oozing from one higher half of it. Uh, the tentacles on that side seem to be going a little bit less uh, active and limp. Um, but that was fifteen to hit for the. Oh, fifteen second to hit. Attack. Uh, yeah. That hit was that with advantage? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, that still hits. Um, uh, that's nine plus three, so twelve more fire okay. damage. Okay. So twenty-two. Math. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. You've now sinned the entire exoskeleton off of this. It seemed to have a a sort of semi-permeable hide on it. Now revealing this mushy, uh, lighter gray brain on the inside, which is kind of pulsing uh, badly with gray ooze coming off one side where his dagger pierced it before. Is Clark. also on fire. Uh, also on fire, which is kind of annoying for it. At this uh, point. Does 19 hit? Oh, yeah. Okay, so I hit twice. <laughs> okay. What are you hitting it with? Uh, oh, the, the the Black Blade of Doom here. Okay. Uh, the Shadow Blade. Okay. Uh, we'll do one damage at a time. Just to Reap that motherfucker. Uh, let's re roll the one. That's better. 9, 10, 11. 15. With uh, three of it being necrotic on the first go. Okay. And one another one. Uh, yeah, you see one the left side of it where it was where it was bleeding before just sort of shrivel up almost to nothing. Excellent. Let's go to the other side then. Fifteen with four necrotic. Okay. Uh, as you cleave down with the uh, with the glaive, it cuts it right uh, cleanly in two. That little that little part that was sort of uh, shrinking before is just sort of rolling around on its own. The thrashing of the of the limbs is trying to keep it moving, but you see it kind of curling on itself as it's on fire as well. The other half uh, just sort of spurts outward from where it was cut and just sort of falls lying there, doesn't move at all as it's consumed by the fire. So that was much better and much more satisfying. Does that one count? It does. Sweet. It, it thinks dead? Oh, yes, it's quite dead. Well, my thanks. Is it turned completely to ashes? Um, it's turning to turn to ooze, actually. Could you, like, step on it and burn it, please? Sure. I don't have that capacity, and I really want to make sure it's dead. Oddly enough, kind of that, that ooze is what my arm was feeling like sometimes. Um, Your arm is still gray. And your left eye now is also gray. Or sorry, your right eye. Is it still working? You feel a sensation. In fact, the problem at this point is that, you know how when your arm has fallen asleep Mm -hmm. and then starts to wake up again and everything starts to hurt like hell? That's what you're feeling right now is all the sensation comes back in, including the broken finger. As Ah, you're kind of realizing, ah, that really, really hurts. Why did you do that? Healing Uh, word. (laughs) However, the grayness does not go away. Okay. Uh, I like... Step on it a few oh. times and then and turn can, to to Buddy six. and cross my arms. Well, I'll be leaving then. Wait, who are you? 
Well, uh, I've got many names, none of which you're going to know, except for Corin. I like that one for a little Corrin. while. Corin, we knew a Corin back in Batur. Did uh, you? Well, I should choose yes. less common names then. Mm. Well, but what, what was what happened with Emerald? Oh, well, he built this thing and then took off. What thing? Left me bound to the damn thing to protect it. The rock? Hmm. What is it? Oh, it's his tower. The rock is a tower? If you go further. <laughs> I don't worry. I'm sure you'll figure out how to open it. I never did, but... Wait, uh, the spell you cast to keep the forest at bay, is, is this still active? Oh, for a couple more minutes. Till I leave. Can, can you not leave right now? No, oh, I don't want to stay here. I've got much more important business. Mm. Such as... Getting the hell out of here. Of course. Well, yes, well, but we are on our way out as well, but if... Good we... for you. What I'm if sure we all stuck well. together? Oh, are you friends of Imral Emic here? No. Well, I don't know anymore. <laughs> Seems like you're on the same path as him, and I want nothing of it. Wait. He bound me here for 700 years, and I have no interest in staying any longer. Not he a sounds moment. Sounds like an asshole. How are you tracking time? In this realm. <laughs> I think this is going to be our X-rated uh, but, 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 uh, session. I, I thought he was our friend. Now I don't know anymore. Yeah, well, that's the way of complex friendships, I suppose. But uh, I thought he was my friend, too, until he bound me here and took my damn ring. I would never bind anybody to such a fate. Well, good. You're one step ahead of him, then. I'm sure he had his good reasons. Probably I'm going to go investigate this. the stone. Okay. Yeah. Clark says thanks and waves. Yeah. Hmm. Thanks. Maybe Thank you. May you all survive with everything intact. Well, what's left anyway? Mm. Yes. If if you could give us like five minutes to investigate this, mm -hmm. <sighs> or give us any hints about this stone, what? Why does he? Why did he buy here? Is this? Is this the seed? Seed? No. No. This is his tower. This is where he did his work, as far as I know, when he was here. I helped him find the damn seed, but after that, he kind of went on his own way. Do you know where the seed is now? Mm, about that way. And he points sort of north from here. Is that where you're? It is roughly in the same direction. He's not really indicating a super precise direction, but that would fit. And if we happen to find the seed, is it the way out? Oh, no. No, I doubt it. What, what I do this place a world of good, though. Provided the protections haven't worn off. And you can face off against her, of course. Who? <laughs> good luck with that. The dragon? Dragon? Oh, no. That's least he worries. Hmm. That dragon is just as lost as everyone else here. Trying desperately to find a way out, and also trying desperately to wrest control away from everyone here. I'm not really sure what it, it wants to do anymore. At first I thought it just wanted to take over, and then I thought it wanted to leave, and I think it just found a different mission at some point. It seems everybody's after like the seed. Who, who are you... when you said her, who are you referring to? Oh, well, the Wild Hunt. Uh, well, not exactly. More like the mother of the Wild Hunt. Uh, name? Hmm, she's got a lot of names. Uh, let me see... Heart of Festering. <laughs> that was a terrible name. Heart of the Forest before that. Yes, it was on the walls of the temple. before that? Mm, Next to think for a minute. I'm sure it'll come to me. It wouldn't happen to be Palexia, would it? Mm, no, no, of course not. Okay, good, good, good. But that does make it more clear. Ah, yes. Calix is her name. Calix? Or was her name. I'm not really sure what her name is anymore. But... Mm. And how do you spell that? I don't know. I don't really bother spelling things. Seems like a waste of time. K dash L I C K S. <laughs> I'm investigating the stone with a dirty twenty. Mm. Okay. Um, it looks like a smooth surfaced stone. Mm -hmm. um, as you kind of run your flames over it, um, it seems to react slightly to the flames, um, as if there's more to it than what you can see. Uh, it looks like you're scarring it somehow, and even there's a small, there's a burning smell. Like should stop. I don't know. Do you want to burn it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to stop. <laughs> Make an alchemy roll. It's to burn it. Oh dear. <laughs> Who knows where that went? Yeah, let's at the turntable. Let's. Uh, that's a net twenty. <laughs> net twenty. So I think it's twenty-eight. Um, as you kind of. Uh, try to sniff. It's a little weird because your fires themselves kind of obscure most scents from getting to you. Mm -hmm. But it smells Sorry. a little like like burning blood. That's gross. But you see nothing on the surface. It smells like burning blood. Hmm? Um... Corin, uh, before you leave, what do you know of Paturo? What do I know of him? Yes, he's right supposed to be... Right sour bastard. That's what I keep hearing. He's always been as far as I've known. 
Apparently, never matter myself. Maybe I'll go to that next. Can you let us know how to meet with Emma? Hmm, as soon as I figure out, perhaps. Okay, so clearly nobody, just not just anybody, you can get an audience with him. I've never tried, to be honest. Well, if you wish to depart right now, hopefully we'll meet again. Oh, maybe. I, I do wish you would stay long enough for the forest to not overtake us. That's more on you than it is on me. Frankly, sitting on that stone for so long has kind of made me want to wander for a little while. But surely five minutes wouldn't be too much trouble. Ah, five minutes. It's always five minutes more with your type, isn't it? Well, five minutes more until I can cast this spell and you're bound to the stone. I don't think I'm waiting for that. I have no idea how to bound somebody to a stone, if that makes you feel better. Mm, sort of. <sighs> so, how does this tower work? I'll turn to look at the tower. It smells like burning blood when I touched it, burning so... Blood. I fell out a tiny hammer. Okay. Start tapping on it as I move around it. I think so, it sounds like we're all going to investigate the tower. Yes, mm, okay. investigating the tower. So, I'm assuming if it's... Is he gone? Um, he's walking to the edge of it, and you can see as he walks, the center of the uh, the area of uh, of Clover is following with him. Uh, we, we could follow him, maybe? Clark right. starts climbing. I don't think he's going to just be walking. Which way is he going? Um, more or less the way you came in. He's going east. Okay, so he's not going towards where I feel. Nope. He doesn't seem to be the slightest bit interested in that. Hey, this guy is sketch. He is, but he seems to know a lot of things. I didn't say that out loud. <laughs> okay. If we ever happen to cross paths again, and maybe I've forgotten you, it happens from time to time, I'll give you this name. Yes. Finn. Finn? Yes. It's a simple name. You should be able to remember it. Is that is it your name? One of your many names? Oh, it's one of my many names. All right. Well, may we Many meet names again. in many places. Well, may we meet again, Finn. May Father Lily sign upon you. May what? Father Lily sign upon you. Follow Lily? Yes, follow Lily, the goddess mm -hmm. of mirth and music. Now, if you excuse me, I think I need to bring a few smiles. And he pulls out from inside his jacket pocket uh, his, uh, his uh, flute and begins to play a very merry tune as he walks through. And you can see as he walks through, there is a parting of this as the clover pops up in front of him and kind of dissuades anything from coming towards him. This guy seems pretty powerful. Um, okay, so tower, tower, what do we do? Uh, you make a history roll. I'll use one of the charges on one of my things, because I rolled a one. <laughs> three charges, which recharge? 1d3 after one. A single, single charge, charge may be used as, as a reaction, reaction yeah. to roll an additional die after failing any in base rolls. So that'll be one of one such charges. There's a nine plus history. Yeah. So Nineteen total. The name Finn actually kind of resonates a little bit with you, um, and you remember the tale of a wandering fae called Finn the Whistler who has come in through t through history multiple times, but hasn't been seen in a long time. The oldest tales tell of him. One of the oldest fae of the land. Said to be, at least in one story, the husband of Fowlily. Or partner. It gets a little fuzzy at times. They don't really have marriage in the same way as you might imagine. And with all of you gathered around the stone... What do I know about Fowlily? Follow Lily, the uh, the goddess of mirth and, and music. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and she's followed mostly by bards, followed mostly by creative types. Um, does not have a huge prominence. Does not seem to have uh, temples of her own that you have seen. But you've heard of the goddess. Um, in 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 common households where they don't necessarily venerate any particular god, it's still not uncommon to put out a uh, a small. Uh, amount of sweets or of wine to follow Lily to bless their celebrations. Okay. But as you all gather around the stone and start to look it over, mm -hmm. pink, pink. that's where we'll call it for this evening. Mm -hmm. And we'll pick up with you examining Emerald's Tower. It smells Strange. like blood. It smells Transmutation like magic. It smells like, like burning blood, to be specific. <laughs> 
So, I want to thank everyone for playing today. I hope you've all had fun. It was a, an odd session. I didn't die! You, I'm not a mind flayer! I, yeah, very close to <laughs> okay. both of us, uh, in a way. But I'm great. Uh, this is, of course, broadcast live on my Twitch channel. You can go to twitch.tv slash encaf1 to look for the most recent episodes. They only stay there for a limited period of time. I think it's two weeks, so there's only two or three episodes you'll ever find there at once. They do up later on YouTube. What should they know about that? Like and subscribe for the videos if you like them, and uh, please give us a thumbs up to let us know that uh, we're doing well. Uh, hit the notification bell if you'd like to see notifications for following videos. And otherwise, how can they get in touch with us? They can find our Facebook page. It is Legend of the Drowned Isles, uh, and there is the group, which is uh, Watchers of the Drowned Isles as well, where we talk a bit more casually, more than just like, hey, we're running this week. <laughs> <laughs> and we do try to run just about every Sunday at 4 o'clock Atlantic Daylight Time now. I think I got that right. Uh, it's 4 o'clock to us in the Atlantic, whatever. 4 o'clock in New time, Brunswick. Time <laughs> Uh, but I uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll be seeing you guys again next week. Bye.